yeah. Have you seen it? Yeah, yeah. It's a comedy show, but it's 80% true. And also... No, no, no. It's called Silicon Valley. And it's about a startup in Silicon Valley. And the problem is, if you come from that world in America, you cannot watch the show. Because it's a comedy, but you begin to cry about halfway through. It's very, it's very real. And what about uh, the other uh, uh, several? Uh, uh, it's uh, uh, Catch and uh, Halt and Catch Fire. fire. Halt and Catch Fire. I've seen that. Halt and Catch Fire. Yeah. It's uh, like a uh, history about first uh, laptops, uh, then uh, first oh, games, okay. uh, network games, etc. Uh, also about startups. I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. On so my, there's um. There's another one about uh, uh, PayPal. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's 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 act, it's uh, the precursor to PayPal. It, mm -hmm. It's um, it, but it's it's sort of the early PayPal, and I, I forget which one it was, but it's like pay. So PayPal is uh, electronic money. Yeah, yeah, I know. Right, and basically it's bankless money. Mm -hmm. is, is the idea, although originally it runs through a bank, mm -hmm. uh, and even today it sometimes will yeah. run through a bank. But it was the original idea of electronic cash, uh, like Bitcoin, yeah, like Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. but, but but not Bitcoin, right? This not is Bitcoin. pre blockchain. Pre pre pre, pre blockchain. Yeah. Uh, but the, the the great thing about the it's a movie. Uh, it's about the porn industry, mm -hmm. and what people don't realize is most of the major advances on transferring of value. Mm -hmm. And also the most the major advances on communications, mm -hmm. things like you know you know everything from uh, videotape to MP3 to CD-ROMs mm -hmm. to today virtual reality. Mm -hmm. The pioneer in it is the porn industry. Mm. <laughs> so I, I, I ran into a, a, a virtual reality 3D team out of Kharkiv, and they have really high quality uh, VR. Mm -hmm. uh, and use your phone to access it. And there mm -hmm. are many startups like this, but this is very high quality. And they said, well, what, what, what are you planning to do? Well, we're planning to show art. Mm -hmm. And you can hold it up to, you know, something, and it will show, like, a statue. Mm -hmm. and, and the name even has statue or something in it, the name of this company, something statue, mm -hmm. like 3D statue or some VR statue. And, you know, and then we can have artists paint buildings, Mm -hmm. And you can hold your phone up to the building, and it will have different colors, and it will show like uh -huh. artwork. Okay. okay, so that's all very interesting, but you know that's not how you're going to commercialize this. So how do you do it? He said you sell it to Playboy, <laughs> and you put your phone over the magazine, and it will show live photo shoot. Uh -huh. Right? That's how you will make money off of this. Uh, and it was to this young woman. She looks at me, and goes, "What?" I said. Every major breakthrough on this type of media has been through the porn industry. Mm -hmm. um, Interesting. So, do you guys uh, uh, videotape? Do you see videotape? Do you people don't look at videotape anymore? But if they know videotape, they know VHS. Yeah, yeah. Right, which is the major VHS is the major video or, or producer. The other one is Sony. Sony Betamax. Yeah, yeah. Right? Betacom. Yeah, but no one knows Betamax. Betamax died very early. Why? For professional reasons. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, well, Betamax was high, higher quality. High yeah. quality for the, so uh, they use it in professional uh, TV. They use it on professional TV. But, and so you would think Sony, right, good good name, high quality. But Betamax <coughs> died. VHS is the one that took Because uh, VHS uh, could uh, buy every citizen, but uh, Betacom uh, is very expensive. So. No. No? The porn industry adopted the VHS uh -huh. standard, <laughs> and uh, and it, this is not just me saying this. There are many studies that show you know, it was like this, and then the porn industry was like that. <laughs> and uh, the, 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 video, uh, the video recorder company, the video player company, the data, the data, the data, the data, the data, the data, the data. And after the porn industry adopted VHS, beta just disappeared. But why they adopt a VHS and but not beta? Uh, it was uh, lower cost and easier to mass produce. Mm -hmm. Copy. Terrible, right? Yeah, and this is interesting.
and uh, and again PayPal. Oh, what was this movie? It's, it's about PayPal. It's about the early stage of the internet. And these guys figure out that if they put nude photos on the internet, people will pay money mm -hmm. <laughs> to watch them. And that's the start of PayPal. Right. So what do you recommend except uh, TV shows? What do I write, Frank? What do you recommend except uh, TV shows? Oh, oh, no, it's Silicon Valley. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, so uh, the, you want to do three things, basically, right? So one, obviously, is think about what, are, what, what is it that, is, that, that can be fixed and made better and that you're passionate about. The, the one problem in Ukraine that I'm running into is you have some really cool startups that go like this. The really cool ones are like this. Like they are real game changers. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, what I find is there are things that are built on top of it, which is fine, and they can make money, and they can be profitable, and they can be interesting, and they can be valuable, but they are increments. They are they are this, and you want to sort of take a step back and think, well, what's the what's the big idea? Don't worry, honestly, and this is what don't worry about the technology. The tech will catch up. Right. Very often people start with the tech and then think about the big idea. No, start with the big idea and the tech will catch up. Don't worry about the law. What's the problem with soul? Yeah. Yeah. The problem. Yeah. In other words, if you come up with the big idea, the tech will get there. Right. That, that that that's the problem you're going to fix. But you, another way of saying it is, the best tech companies, tech is secondary. Uh, I mean, think about it. Uh, if you think about it, the, the, the tech actually today it's more sophisticated, but the original tech and digital kind of sleep in Right? Let's connect people up so they can do it. It's not, that, it's not that extraordinary. What's cool about Facebook is the network effects. Right? The idea that I can communicate and it builds out and it reinforces and becomes more valuable. So tech's important. Without it, you couldn't do it. But the value isn't the tech. The value is the network. Uh, and so the tech will get there. Right? So don't think about the tech. Don't think about the law. I run into mm -hmm. this problem here in Ukraine all the time. Well, we can't do it. It's illegal. Mm -hmm. Uber was illegal when it first set up. It, it, it violated the taxi laws all over the place in the states. Um, Citigroup. I mean, it's not just simply startups. Citigroup is uh, uh, was the biggest bank in the world. Mm -hmm. I was a managing director there. Citigroup was illegal for a year. <laughs> <laughs> they changed the law to permit Citigroup to have. Right? So you want to start with the big idea, and really it's a, gee, this should be fixed. Here's the point. So traffic stinks here, right? There's got to be a way to figure out how to do traffic here. Is it car sharing? Is it, is it a way to uh, synchronize the way cars move in and out? Is there a smarter way just using big data and uh, human behavior that you can begin to align people? Who knows, right? But there's a big problem here with traffic. That's your big issue. And what you need to be able to do is figure out with the limited street space that we have and the, and the congestion and, the, uh, and the, 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 the peak periods, is there a way we, we can fix this? I guarantee you, if you can figure out a cool idea for this, right, Kiev, Kiev City will adopt this. In a, I've met the guy uh, in the mayor's office who's responsible for this stuff. He is very tech savvy. Mm -hmm. He's got an entire wall. It's actually a little scary. He has an entire wall with uh, TV cameras on, <laughs> and he can look at everything. Uh, uh, he, 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 what he did, very smart, he put GPS trackers on all the snow machines mm -hmm. because people would complain all the time the snow mm -hmm, wasn't mm -hmm. being plowed. And with the GPS trackers, he realized it was because half the truckers were going halfway and stopping and drinking tea, tea all night. And he was able to track where they were going and what they were doing. Number one, to make sure they work, but number two, to optimize efficiency, make sure they weren't going over the same places multiple times. Very simple. Tech, simple. It's GPS. GPS, big map, that's all he did. But it was a smart idea. Anyway, so the, that's the first thing. Second thing, team. Team, 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 team. The, the team is more important, vastly more important than the tech. It may not be as important as the cool idea. Maybe 50-50 there, but team is critical. Um... I'll give you a great example. So today, one of my teams um, pitched 
for a uh, U.S. investor. Uh, but it wasn't a pitch the way you think of pitches. They met with him for an hour and a half, 90 minutes, one to one. And they start with the pitch, but they very quickly went into the details. And half of his, it was very, after he left, the team looked over at me, and they were laughing because they could tell half the questions he asked, more than half the questions he asked, were about the team. Mm -hmm. You guys, how do you think about this? You know, how do you work together? Who does this? Who does that? It was all team stuff. I mean, cool tech, cool idea, but he was very focused on could this team implement what he wanted to do. So that's the second thing, right? And by team, again, it's not just tech. You have to think marketing, product development, uh, finance, who's going to talk to investors, mm -hmm. right? I hate to say it, part of it is English language uh, because most of your investors don't speak Russian uh, if you're looking internationally. So there should be at least one or two people that have some basic English. I'm sorry? All of them should know English. Well, you know, very often the tech guys don't. I've, I've met a lot of tech guys that don't and a lot of design guys that don't. Maybe but they already, uh, who, who speak English, they already leave the country. <laughs> Maybe, I, I don't know. Left the so, country. But, but it's, it's the team. Like how do you collect together? How, you know, do you all think of this as a business, or do some of, some of you think of it as a hobby? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, as you probably know, right, I, I run an incubator uh, here in, in Ukraine. Uh, it's the AO incubator. By the way, I, I have to say, oh, am, I, am I jumping ahead of time? I, I don't worry about time. I have to say this. Uh, so we are taking applications. I always forget to say this. We are taking applications now for the next cycle. Uh, we just finished our first cycle on Friday. Okay. Uh, and it went really well. Uh, for those of you who are up in Lviv this past weekend, uh, there were um, uh, three of my teams uh, applied to pitch. Uh, all three made it to the semifinals, two made it into the finals, and one was in the top tier. What does it mean? 20% of my 20% of the top 10, two out of the 10, came out of our incubator. Not bad for a first cycle. And we only had seven companies in this first cycle. So uh, it, uh, it worked out quite well. Um, and we, all, we already have investment traction. Uh, so again, today we had a, this is a serious investment discussion, hour and a half, first meeting. But this same team has already met another New York investor who is thinking of bringing them to the States. Uh, the business will stay here, but they need to go to the U.S. to train. Um, one of our other teams, uh, it's a um, uh, hardware, uh, a med tech, uh, biotech hardware company. Um, and they, they entered into a global competition. It's called the GIST competition. By the way, if you don't know about it, go online, G-I-S-T. They will continually do this competition. G-I-S-T. It's, it's sponsored by the U.S. State Department. Uh, and basically, it's a, it's a global competition and very selective. But they will take uh, a group uh, and bring them to the U.S. full expenses paid uh, for uh, two months. Uh, so in our case, this company applied. They were accepted. Sort of top 8% was accepted. And they're going to, uh, one of them will go to Phoenix, Arizona, you know, very strong biosciences. Mm -hmm. um, uh, incubator there. Uh, all expenses paid for two months. So if you don't know what GIST, it's a it's a great program. They just started it. They will continue to do it. And look at look look it up because it's a it's a good uh, a good program. They they won't necessarily help you with visas, but but they will kind of help you with visas. <laughs> um, uh, we have two other companies that are in their third round of discussions with an Israeli company uh, who's looking to fund them. So out of our seven, that means four of them are, are in active business, uh, active investment discussions right now. Uh, the other three are, um, uh, one of them is they just fell behind. They've got to, they've got to fix their, um, they've got to fix their uh, prototype. Uh, once the prototype's fixed, they'll get something. Uh, the second one is uh, just weird. <laughs> Every group has got the ugly child. I hate to say it, I love all my children, but one of them looks kind of ugly. They'll get there. But, uh, and, uh, and the third one is, um, uh, again, that's not yet fully moving at this stage, uh, has to have their tech verified. The tech is really good, but, but they need to have it third-party verified, which 
we, we're comfortable will happen. When that happens, boom, they're going to get snapped up. I mean, our, we have lots of people circling them. As soon as we verify the tech, they will get snapped up. And, and we have a, we have a, uh, a fund uh, that can help them with this. So we'll fund their, um, their development. Um, so four out of seven real traction, probably a fifth. Not so bad hmm. right, for, for a first cycle. Um, so anyway, so, we're pa so the applications are due uh, uh, 5 p.m. next week, uh, the 8th. Please apply. Uh, we are looking for really good startups. Um, and uh, a little bit of what I'm talking about today, but I'm going to shout over her, today uh, is uh, relates actually to what we do in the incubator. So, uh, but I want to finish this point. So the question I was asked was, you know, what are the three, what are the things you think about when uh, looking at a startup, right? So the first is the big idea, let everything else follow. The second is the team. And the third really relates to what I'm about to talk about, which is the thought process of how to talk to, uh, how to develop the product, how to talk to distributors, how to talk to investors. So I know everyone thinks about pitching, right? Because pitching, you have to stand in front of an audience. You got a big screen. I mean, all the IT arena is is a pitch contest. Pitching is, and pitch contests are incredibly not real. <laughs> Nobody stands in front of a nine-foot screen and dances around for five minutes and gets money. It just doesn't happen. Okay, it's good practice, right? Because you have to be able to convey the business in a short period of time. Uh, it's good practice because you're under a lot of pressure. But most real pitch discussions are one-to-one -one like this, right? Where the guy doesn't wait for five minutes. Oh, nice slides dancing around. Two minutes in, he says, I don't buy it. And you have to be ready to talk. Or at the end of five minutes, they say, really cool, give me your financials, right? Or they begin to really judge, you know, do I like the business model? Do I like the product? Have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? This sort of thing in front of a screen gets you nowhere. <laughs> Uh, I don't want to be negative, but I've many of the teams that I saw pitching in Lviv, they, they were great. It was entertaining. I loved it. Right? The business model is terrible. There's no way in hell anyone would invest in these guys. But they did very well because that's what the pitching contests are there intended to show. Is it kind of fun and does it get people excited? But pitching is the ribbon on the present. Right? It is the cherry on the ice cream. It's not the ice cream. Right? It's not the package. Uh, and so what you really need to do is think through the business in a way that is similar to, consistent with, the way the people you're talking to think about the business. Right? So what does that mean? It means that you have to have a business plan and a product plan. You have to be thinking about value in the same way that the person you're talking to thinks about value. I'll give you a great example here in Ukraine. Inevitably, Every time this comes up, we've, we've had maybe 30 or 40 discussions with Ukrainian VCs. Inevitably, somewhere towards the end of the discussion, they say, what's the value of your company? What's your answer when they say this? What's the value of your company? What's the value of your company? Very valuable. Sorry? Very valuable. Very valuable, right? <laughs> right? And it becomes this discussion. Well, I think the value is $5 million. You think it's 600000 What? You think my baby is so ugly? This is my life. It's $5 million. dollars Six hundred? No way. And it becomes this type of discussion. It's useless. Mm -hmm. Right? All the normal ways in which you value make no sense when you're doing startups. I mean, normally it's things like customer acquisition, cash flows, revenues, net income, comparables. Maybe it's assets. Right? None of that applies in the case of a startup. Really, the value is what you'll pay me. Right? Well, that's the value. How do you fix this? Right? You say five, I say two. Well, fine, goodbye. Goodbye. You say six, I say one. Yeah, goodbye. How do you fix this? And if you solve the part of your company to someone. Well, yeah, but someone, that someone's going to have to have a value, right? So, some point. So maybe you sell it to me 5% for $10,000. Okay, then we have a benchmark. Yeah. Right? But we have to then decide before we get to that, what's the implied value? You always have this. So how do you get there? We had this problem in the U.S. 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Exact same problem. And people just sit there going, five, two, seven, one. I mean, it's 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 waste of time. 
Uh, and so we ended up adopting the convertible note structure. Uh, sometimes you've heard some, it's called the safe instrument. It's, it's similar to a convertible note, S-A-F-E. Um, basically it says this, let's not negotiate over value. You think I'm dirty and terrible. I think I'm great and fantastic. Let's not worry about this because you could be right and I could be wrong. The way a finance guy thinks about it, so I come out of the finance world. I, I was a banker. The way the finance people think about it is startups are pure optionality. Is what we say. Mm -hmm. It's an option, right? It could be this. Or it could be, be this. We don't know. Pure optionality. So how do you assess the value? And if you know anything about finance, the finance, the, the, the formula for optionality is quite complex. It's a natural law, right? Which means it can go like this, depending on how you what, what the inputs are. So no one really knows the value. It's pure optionality. So what do we do with a convertible note? We say, look, I need hundred thousand dollars. You've looked at my business plan, right? I'm able to talk to you about what my business is, my product. My go-to-market strategy, this is what I need the money for. I need to buy this. I need to hire this. I need to advertise this. Do you agree this is important? Yeah, Yeah. right? You, you like my business model. You like my product. You think I'm a good team. You agree that my marketing strategy makes sense. You agree that whatever additional things I need the money for makes sense. And so you say, yeah, $100,000, not a waste. I just don't know whether I'm getting 5% or 50% of the company. So let's fuck, give me the $100,000 mm -hmm. and I will give you this note. The note will convert into stock at a future date. That future date will be when somebody invests over X amount, 200,000, right? Some big number. At that future date, I will have revenues, I hope. Because we agree, mm -hmm. this model works. You understand my model, you understand why I need the 100,000. So you agree. Right? That we don't have to work with value we don't know right now. But at some future point, if what I do with your money works, I'll have customers, I'll have revenues, uh, I'll have income. And at that point, some other person will come in and invest, let's say, $200,000. There we have value based upon something we can talk about, customers, revenues, income. Maybe it's a year, maybe it's two years from now. Right? At that point, the note will convert into uh, equity. But because you invested early, you get a discount. I'll give you a 20%, 30% discount to reflect the fact that you invested early. Makes sense, right? Now we don't have to fight 7162. The value is set by a third party that puts in real money. So real skin in the game. This is not some theoretical value. Someone has put in $200,000 at this value. And you get the same value minus 30%, 20%, whatever we negotiate. Not so bad, right? Mm -hmm. That's how we fix this in the US. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very, very sort of, but if you talk to investors in Ukraine, so I hate to say, the guys that are coming out of our incubator are smarter about seed investments than the seed investor. Because <laughs> they're having these meetings and the seed investor says, what's the value? Five million, we think. Well, I think the value is one million. Oh, I understand that. Let's do a convertible note. Let's do a safe instrument. It's common in America. And I'm not, uh, uh, five minutes after the meeting, I get a note from the team saying, good meeting, we had a lot of fun, and we think they are good, you know, good investors. I almost automatically get this, an email from the investor. Oh, they're not interested in our money because they proposed a note, not equity. Uh, and I have to then teach the investor. No, no, here's what they're doing. Um, so the, the point is you're, 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 you're having to learn a vocabulary, but it's more than just vocabulary. It's a thought process. Uh, and it's really important because the guys you're dealing with, if you're dealing with global investors, global distributors, first of all, most of them can't find Ukraine on a map, right? They just can't. And if they can find Ukraine on a map, they associate it with Trump, Zelensky recorded phone calls or Manafort. Or no, it's terrible. They do. My, my, I'm, I'm not exaggerating. My friends in New York, I, I live in the States. My friends in New York think I'm in Siberia right now. <laughs> and when I come back from Ukraine, they uh, inevitably one of them asks me, did you meet Giuliani or did you meet someone who knows Manafort? I'm, I'm actually not kidding. <laughs> Uh, and so they, they don't understand the value of, what, of what's really here. And, and let me just spend two minutes on this. 
Anyone that comes here from London or the US, <clears throat> Silicon Valley, Boston, New York is stunned by the energy and the creativity and the tech and the focus here in Ukraine. Not just Kiev, Lviv, Kiev, even, believe it or not, Kharkiv. Mm -hmm. uh, they, are, they are stunned at how cool these things are. I brought a guy here uh, about seven months ago to Kharkiv. He's from London. He is a, is a guy named Will Mercer. Uh, if any of you were at our demo day yesterday, you would have seen Will was one of the guys. He is a hipster. He's a very kind of cool hipster guy. He's also a venture capital investor. And I sent him out to Kharkiv and uh, met him about two days later. He told me it was the coolest city with the greatest opportunity, the most potential of any place he's never heard of. He knew, he knew nothing about Kharkiv before he was there. Now he is the biggest supporter. If you tell him you are from Kharkiv, he loves you. Because, are you from Kharkiv? No. No? 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 Kharkiv? Kharkiv, okay. So, so he loves Kharkiv. He really does. There you go. So the point is, there's a lot of value here. It's just people don't know it. There is something called the Good Country Index. If you don't know it, look it up. It's on the internet, the Good Country Index. It's a privately prepared index. It's by a, a, a uh, kind of a global nonprofit organization. And what they do is they rank countries based upon contributions to the global good, right? Global benefit. And it's based on perception. And they do, it's like 77 different questions. They ask around, all around the world, something like this. And you have to give your answers, and they score them. Science and technology. Who is number one in the world on the, on the good country index? It's Ukraine. Did you know this? No. Stunning, right? No. Now, remember, it's perception, right? I'm sorry? Take a look, it's Ukraine. Russia, Ukraine, and Russia. Nope, Ukraine. Russia. I'm telling you, it's Ukraine. I, I looked at it this morning. <laughs> it's called the Good Country Index. Yeah, but if it's like a perception also... It's By the way, number two, Czech Republic. Mm -hmm. Sorry, it's not Russia. First Russia, first position, second is Euro Russia, and first one is not Ukraine, second one is also one Euro Russia. The Good Country Index, it's Ukraine, Czech Republic, and I forget where. Maybe it's something new? No, no, this is this is this is this is this is actually an index that's been around for many years. Sorry. I'm sorry? Uh, how do they win this index? It's based on public questionnaires. They do questionnaires around them, so it's perception. Uh -huh. Yeah. So if it, if this ranking is perceptional, so it's kind of not not so valid. No, it is valid. Not right. It's it's valid because again, I'm thinking about it from an investor perspective. Good or bad, right or wrong, I don't care. But people who know Ukraine rank it very high. Right? If you don't know Ukraine, then you think maybe Russia or Belarus, right? You think, what is it, uh, war, war of uh, uh, war of tanks, whatever the hell that damn thing is, in Belarus. Uh, or WhatsApp, right? One of the founders of WhatsApp comes out of Belarus. Uh, but the fact is that for people that know Ukraine, it's yeah. very you see, right? Yeah. Look at it this morning. Science and technology first. Yeah. Uh, shocking, right? I say this to people in Ukraine, they're always shocked, uh, which is funny for me, right? Because it's something I have thought since I've gotten here. Version one. And it's something that three. people who come from the States think when they come here. They're, they're very surprised by this. Um, the point, though, is this sort of thing needs to be conveyed in a way that people outside Ukraine understand. And so one of the biggest challenges for Ukrainian startups, it isn't the tech. The tech is pretty good here. There are, you know, like, like any place, right? Some good, some not so good. Uh, it isn't the, the energy. The energy is high. Everyone knows the education levels are high in Ukraine. It isn't the creativity. Um, I will tell you, it's, it's, it's a kind of a sorry thing, but I've talked to managers of uh, incubators in Europe, Switzerland, Germany, uh, Poland, uh, Finland, um, one or two other places. And they will all say the most creative teams, the most hardworking teams are Ukrainian. It's sad that they're not in Ukraine, but they're Ukrainian. What's missing by and large is the business platform. And again, business platform meaning the way of thinking about business. 
It's not pitching. It's not showing a nice show. I mean, honestly, this is why I don't like things like the tech forum. Next year, we're, we're going to be five. This year, we were two out of ten. Next year, we'll be five out of ten. But I still don't like them because they give you this artificial sense of what it is investors want. They don't care about this stuff. I mean, it's kind of cool. It's nice. Why not? Maybe it catches my attention, but it's not going to get you money. What gets you funding is really being able to walk through in detail why your business makes sense. And to be able to explain it in a way that makes sense to someone who's not in Ukraine. Again, the vocabulary and the way of thinking. It's more, I'll give you a, I'll give you a great example. Of this. So one of our companies, uh, one of the top ten, uh, they, they, they were one of the top ten finalists. A company called Komen, C-O-M-I-N. Komen does uh, online uh, sales. Uh, they do. Uh, they take a widget, very very simple uh, widget for app in terms of installation, and they can put it on a blog post. And using AI, they can uh, scan the post, figure out the subject matter, and match it to a marketer, mm -hmm. and then sell through this widget. And they can and you can buy very easily without leaving the page. Today, right? It's it's you don't have this machine learning. You basically see an ad. Someone's put it there. It may or may not directly relate to the blog. You click on it, you go to a different site. You then scroll through, see what you want, you buy, click onto a different page, and then you have to go all the way back to the original blog. And it's difficult to install these things, and they are not necessarily automatically tuned to the subject of what's on the blog. They are able to uh, put this very simple uh, widget on the page. You don't leave the page, uh, and through machine learning, they're able to match the product and adjust the product based upon the content of the page. As a result, the conversion rate is one and a half to two times greater mm -hmm. than the normal conversion rate. Not so bad, right? Uh, and they've got a couple of projects, a couple of test runs. They've done them in the past, and they're doing some now as well. So you might say, well, very interesting, right? Is this somewhat new? Uh, they have two guys talking right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, very I serious. Just this. Yeah, looking right, very serious right now. Um, and actually, a third one approached them yesterday. Uh, no, they'll, they'll get funded. Komen will get funded. It's, it's not even a question. Um, I, I actually, I will, I will just mention. Uh, in my incubator, we have 26 mentors. Uh, Two-thirds of them are from outside Ukraine. A third of them are from Ukraine. Why do we have these mentors? Uh, because, again, you have to be able to think like an investor or think like somebody, or be able to convey and communicate and develop a business that makes sense to people that are working with you at the glo global level. So these are mentors who are really, really good. So the, the mentor for uh, Komen is a guy named John Kim. Mm -hmm. uh, John Kim, some of you may know, he spends half his time in Kiev. His uh, wife is Ukrainian, so he, half the time here, half the time in Silicon Valley. But John was the co-founder of a company called Five Nine, classic unicorn, like billion-dollar valuation when they listed on the Nasdaq. He knows this world. John loves coming. Um, you know, a, another one of our mentors is a guy named Andy Baines. Uh, Andy, as you may, uh, some of you may know, he also comes to Ukraine often. Uh, he does some work here. Uh, Andy uh, was uh, in Apple. He worked with Steve Jobs. He is uh, one of the original co-founders of a company called Nest. Nest, as you may know, was sold to Google for roughly $3.2 billion. Not bad. Um, another one of our, found, uh, of our mentors is a guy named Bob, Sh uh, Bob Scharf. Uh, Bob did his first startup when he was 45. He's an engineer, hardware guy, uh, primarily nanotech. And uh, Bob ended up selling three companies, total of $350 million. He's also the head of the Cornell. I'm a professor at Cornell now. He's the head of the Cornell Hardware Incubator. So he's very good at this stuff. Um, the point is, it's all this, it's this thought process, right? You want to work with these guys because they, they, they feel the pain. They know the area. They know the excitement. They have made all the mistakes. Uh, and the idea is to convey to you what these mistakes are before you make them. But more importantly to this topic, they also are the people you can communicate with. They've raised money. Or in some cases, they are investors. These are the guys you might even talk to. 
And so you want to be able to present your business, your plan, your idea in a way that they really begin to understand. Uh, so in the case of Kuhlman, I was describing what they were doing. Well, it's a little complicated, actually, if you think about it, right? It's, it's widgets. It's machine learning. It's scanning. It's conversion. Now, you can explain it, but it doesn't really capture what's happening. So if you saw them yesterday, you'll see they talked about impulse buying. Yeah. They say, we've digitalized impulse buying. That was sort of an impossible model. Okay. So they did not know the phrase impulse buying until they came into our incubator. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's a very sort of Western European, U.S. retail way of thinking. It's a, it's a, a term of art. And so if you are someone that invests in the retail sector and someone says impulse buying, they'll know what this means. Uh, as soon as you say it, it's like, ah, I get it. Impulse buying is where you go into a silpo to buy bread. Uh, and you're waiting in line to buy bread, and there's that bar of chocolate in front of you, and now you have to have that bar of chocolate. right? It's, it's the most important thing, and so you buy it, even though you never intended to, you buy it and you leave. Uh, billions of dollars in Western Europe and the UK, and it's billions of dollars in revenue are tied to impulse buying. There are some retail companies in America, over 30% of their revenues come from impulse buying. Well, think about it. If I said to you while you're in Silpo, you're standing there with your bread, and there's a picture of the chocolate, and it says, well, if you go to the store next door, you can buy this chocolate, uh, so buy it and then come back. Are you going to buy it? Not so much. right? What Komen does is they permit you to digitalize impulse buying. You never leave the page. The chocolate's there, you can buy it, and you continue in the line doing whatever it was you were doing. And so, not surprising, their uh, conversion rates are much higher than normal, just like in a, like a Silpo, right? Because of this impulse buying, you're going to buy more chocolate because you're waiting there in line. As soon as you say this to a retail investor, boom, they get it. Uh, and that's the key point. It's not that there's any, did I change the tech? No. Was Coleman's basic idea there when they joined the incubator? Absolutely. Did they explain it? Was the context impulse buying? No. Right? It's not right or wrong. It's just a, quite a way of communicating it. Uh, it's really a business model, a way of thinking about revenue production and a business model that wasn't necessarily clear, not surprisingly, because these guys had no experience with U.S. retail investors. Make sense? Um, so it's really it's this idea of developing a business plan, a business model that gets conveyed through your pitch. It's not the pitch itself. Right? In other words, you can actually have a lousy pitch, but still have an incredible – you could lose the Lviv IT arena and still not do very well. So we had three teams right, that entered into Lviv IT arena. All three made it into the semis. Two made it into the finals. One of the, the team that didn't make it into the finals – just kind of screwed up the Q&A. Great pitch, screw up the Q&A. That team has three serious investors looking at them right now because the business model is so good. Um, and they're able to sit down and have these very, very strong discussions. Yeah? Uh, does Ukraine uh, need its uh, own stock market and stock exchange? Does Ukraine need it? You're asking? So the question is, does Ukraine need its own stock? It's a great question. Um, the answer is ideally yes, but absolutely no. What do I mean by that? So I should tell you my background. I should get, so people know I do an incubator now. Some of you might know I'm a professor. And you would say to yourself, oh, God, he's a professor. By the way, I'm a law professor, which is even worse. But before this, I was a banker. So I was a managing director at a company called Citigroup. Citigroup owns Citibank. When I was there, we were the biggest bank in the world. Uh, my, my, the group that I ran uh, was about 12% of Citi's profits. So we were big. We were $1.2, $1.3 billion in profit. Um, before that, I was a company called Solomon Brothers. Solomon Brothers was the world's biggest bond trading house. This is why I love his question, because this is my world. Uh, was the world's biggest bond trading house. Uh, and I was a managing director there. Before that, I was a managing director at a bank called Nomura Securities. Nomura is Japanese. Uh, I was actually in the New York office. When I was at Nomura, they made more money than Sony. 
<laughs> they were big. Uh, so the question is, does Ukraine need a stock market? Ideally, yes. Honestly, forget startups. Ukraine should have a stock market. Uh, because it's an efficient way to allocate capital. Mm -hmm. And Ukraine has the advantage of being able to create a stock market using blockchain, using modern technology, because you have nothing basically right now, mm -hmm. right? And so if I have an existing market, I've got to tear it down and then build a new one. But if I re don't really have anything, you can just write on a blank sheet of paper. So I met the, the head of the Ukrainian securities regulator, Timur, I forget his name, big tall guy. Uh, used to play basketball, uh, and uh, we were talking about this. And Ukraine is ready for a blockchain-based, you know, really modern stock market. So this is a great opportunity for it. But the fact that Ukraine doesn't have it doesn't mean that it's bad for startups. Why? You can list in Poland. I hate to say it, but if you have to list somewhere locally, list in Poland. List in Luxembourg. Um, the truth is that most of you will want to list on the NASDAQ in the US anyways. So I will just mention very quickly, the real fix is to bring the NASDAQ system to Ukraine. NASDAQ, you know, trades in the United States. NASDAQ trade is, a, is the huge tech stock market in the States. It's a computer platform. Guess what? Uh, at, uh, nine in the, at nine in the morning in Ukraine, it's 2 a.m. in America. Those computers are asleep. Just turn them on and have them run the Ukrainian markets. Uh, that's what NASDAQ does. For, for a number of years, NASDAQ ran a stock market in Japan for just this reason. And they could run a limited platform in Ukraine uh, during the hours when America is closed. You could set up a NASDAQ in Japan. Why is, I'm sorry, in, in Ukraine. Why is that good? Because the fact is you want to have trading at home. People in Ukraine should benefit from the value of your startups. Your startups will do very well. Ukraine doesn't have a real unicorn yet, but it's almost there. There are a couple of joint ventures that have greater than a billion value. Grammarly is getting close to a billion. But the fact is, this country is, I, I really believe, is poised for some very, very serious business. And Ukraine should benefit from the value. The people here should benefit from the value, hence the stock market. But if it's not going to be in Ukraine, you can do it in, let's say, Poland. I hate to say it, but maybe that's <laughs> doable. Make sense? Um, OK, so any questions so far? I have a question about the structure. Uh, structure of our incubator? Yes. OK. How does it work, and why uh, your colleagues, investors, work with our people who pay, who pay for it? So, oh, it's a great question. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so, so the question is, it's really, it's really three <coughs> questions, actually. Uh, no, 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 no. no. This is my thinking thing. No, no, I'm, I'm open. Um, so it's really three questions. Uh, one question is, why are you doing this? Uh, and is there an economic motivation? How long? Uh, how long are we? How long have we been doing this for? Right? Who are we basically? And ultimately, what is our what is the final goal for us, I guess, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so let's start with me. Uh, so I'm a professor at Cornell University. I was a pretty senior banker, as I was explaining. Uh, I used to do uh, venture capital. I used to do private equity. I used to do acquisitions. I have probably written or, uh, written or read over 1,000 pitches, maybe 10,000. Lord, no, I hate them at this point. Uh, and when I was doing it, we had 10 minutes per pitch. And these were not, you know, you know $25,000 investments. These were, you know, $10 million things. And I would have literally like this to, to look at them. So pitches I know. And the other thing you learn from this is you know when you read a pitch where the weaknesses are in the business plan. This is why I say the pitches last. It's the business plan that's important, and that gets reflected in the pitch. Right? Guys who are good at this... And again, many investors have lots of experience. They will know from just reading the plan there's something wrong. Mm -hmm. So, but I became an academic. I had wanted to be a professor. It's a character flaw. Uh, and I was asked to come to lecture in Ukraine. So I came here about four and a half years ago. I live in New York. Mm -hmm. But I arrived in Kharkiv 10 days after the Lenin statue was pulled down. Mm -hmm. 
this was Kharkiv was a red zone. The State Department made it a red zone for America. It was a little bit of a crazy place to be. But I had agreed that I was going to lecture at Yaroslav Mudia. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I lectured there um, and was invited back again and again. And eventually they asked me to help uh, find ways to bring foreign capital to Ukraine. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I worked with some universities. What I really wanted to do was find a, uh, a really good incubator in Ukraine. So my thinking was, if there was a really good global incubator in Ukraine, I would help them. I couldn't find it. It just didn't exist here. There's some mm -hmm. good things here, but not globally competitive incubators. I mean, all you have to do, if you saw yesterday, look at our pitches, compare them to any other group, including the top 10 in Tech Lviv, Tech Arena, mm -hmm. and we blow them away. It's not to say they're bad, they're just different, right? These are Ukrainian pitches designed by Ukrainian business guys with Ukrainian mentors that look really good in Ukraine that look very strange in New York. Mm -hmm. Ours work in Ukraine and they work in New York too. Uh, and so I tried to find, couldn't, and that's when I decided to build our incubator. So I've been back and forth for about four and a half years. It's a geo incubator. EO, EO. I'll explain the background. So, so. Sorry, uh, where, where, where is this incubator? Uh, what, in Ukraine? What? It's here, yeah. Kiev yeah. and Kharkiv. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so it's AO. EO. Mm -hmm. AO is Latin for to go forward, <laughs> to progress. Um, and so we decided to create this incubator. By the way, I should mention. That's why I came back. This is my childhood, actually. Uh, I visited Kiev and Odessa as a boy, probably before you were born. Welcome to my country. Uh, so uh, the point is, I've known this part of the world since I was a kid. This is why I, came, I was invited back, and I came back. Now, it was great to make this incubator. What people don't realize is the original incubators in America were publicly funded. Mm -hmm. Today, you know, Techstars, Y Combinator, 500 startups, they are all privately financed. There are venture capital funds, there's private investors, but that's today, 20 years later. 15 years later, the original structures were either training groups or government funding. That's what our model is. Our model is the early American model. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had to get funding. USAID funds me. Mm -hmm. So the US government funds me for the next three years. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called the Competitive Economy Program. Uh, and uh, it is funded, it has $41 million, I think, for Ukraine. I don't get all of it. <laughs> Uh, but they are funding me in Kiev and Kharkiv for the next three years. Here in Kiev, we are located in Amerikanski Doma. Nice, yeah? Okay, we are, we are there. Uh, and in Kharkiv, we have a space in Kharkiv Polytechnic. Uh, it is, uh, it's the computer college right off of Pushkinsky. Maybe you know it. Okay, in the center of town. Uh, so we're very near the McDonald's. Um, so the point is, is, is we have government funding. Now, what does it mean? It means, number one, we don't have an economic motive. It's good, right? Our goal here is to build an infrastructure. Mm -hmm. um, it also means we charge no fees. We do ask that the companies in the incubator give up a little equity. Each company has two mentors, one typically non-Ukrainian, one Ukrainian. If I'm one of the mentors, I get no equity. Uh, but uh, some of our other mentors will get 1%. Uh, so maximum 2%, right, if you have two mentors. In addition, we have about 20, 25 law firms and financial managers that work for our incubator for free. Why? It's the U.S. model. You know why? It's really crucial to be part of this incubator. That's, that's it. I run some, by the way, I run part of a, a group called Cornell Tech. Mm -hmm. uh, Google Cornell Tech if you want, Cornell T-E-C-H. Cornell Tech is to New York what Stanford is to Silicon Valley. We are the Stanford for New York City. Mm -hmm. There are three programs there. I'm the founding director of one of them. Mm -hmm. I work with all the major law firms and they do work for us for free because it's just cool to be part of us. They get other clients and other business because they are with us. Same thing with this incubator. This incubator just started. 
but it's already getting kind of cool. Like, and it's yeah. fun to work with us. We have good teams. So what these law firms agree is, for basic work, incorporation, basic documents, no cost. If you ask them to do more difficult work, like patents, for example, they will charge you, but they defer the cost for three years. Mm -hmm. And they, the, the payment is by the company, not by the founders. So if the company blows up, they get nothing. right? Because they are taking risk, usually they get a little equity. In America, it's one half percent. Mm -hmm. uh, if you do some very serious business, like you raise capital, raise a lot of money, uh, then everyone gets paid. You get paid, everyone gets paid. Lawyers get paid, and so forth. So it's three tiers. So what does it mean? It means at most, you will give up 3% of your equity. right? 1% for each mentor, unless it's me, in which case it's zero. right? And one half percent for financial manager, if you decide, it's your choice, it's your choice, or one half percent to the lawyers. Again, it's your choice. So zero cost, three percent equity, that's it. And we finance things. So if you're in Kharkiv, we will pay you to come to we will pay for you to come to Kiev uh, to go to our boot camp. We have a boot camp. Uh, uh, the teams that went to Lviv IT Arena, we paid for those too. We have funding for this. So not only do we not charge anything, we actually have funding to promote the businesses. And that's our goal. Our goal is to really create an infrastructure here. Uh, another way of saying it is very often people say to me, who are your competitors? Mm -hmm. I have no competitors. What I mean by that is, well, it's because we're so good. No, what I mean by that is um, I am here to promote the ecosystem. I am here to promote the platform. If I can make other systems better, I'm happy to do it. Why? Is it because I'm such a nice guy? No. Well, maybe yes, but no. Uh, we have a saying in America. When the tide, tide is like water, it's, uh, you know, water in an ocean. When the tide comes in, all the boats rise. Mm -hmm. It means if somebody else gets the next Facebook and not me, if Pub 4.0 has the next Facebook and not me, I will still benefit. Right, because now American investors will go, geez, next Facebook, is what else is there? Let's call Whitehead. Mm -hmm. So I really have no competitors in, in this way. I am happy to work with anybody. Um, does that answer? So our motivation is not financial. Mm -hmm. In the future, we may have to take a little equity. Because remember, USAID funds me for three years. Mm -hmm. Three years and one day, so I got to figure. You have some of these. Sorry? You have some of these. You have some of these. No, I don't. Right? Zero. As a professor at Cornell University. I, I, get, I, I get no salary, uh, zero, from U.S. Now, of course, I'm a professor at Cornell. How do you do What's that? How do you do when you take this place? My, my, my fund, uh, uh, USAID pays for my hotel. My, my, my apartment. What is your motivation? Um, and as I understood, you don't have a profit, or profit from startups right now. You should wait for something like new Facebook or something else. Well, uh, actually, no, I, so it depends on how you look at it. I, I think the seven businesses that we have, uh, in fact, I'm, I'm not think, I'm quite confident that of the seven businesses we have, five have increased in value dramatically, uh, meaning that they had a little bit of angel money coming in. Mm -hmm. When they pick up additional funding, that will, dry, that will zip up dramatically. So on paper, We've got a number of companies that have done well. Are they going to do full exits? No. Full exits take five years, easily, maybe six. Uh, and we've only finished our first four months. Uh, but in terms of uh, paper valuations, I am quite, and, and you know, limited valuations, uh, the multiples have gone up for four, maybe five of them, quite substantially. Uh, what's my motivation? You know, uh, you're going to find this very strange. Uh, I made a lot of money as a banker. <laughs> That's why I became a professor. Uh, I, so when I went from being head of you know, Citigroup, I, was, I ran Citigroup Asia. When I left uh, Japan and became an academic, just to get, I'll, I'll, I actually don't say this very often, so between us, it's a quiet group. Uh, what do you think the drop in my salary was? What percent? 50%, 60%, 40%. Oh. 40%. Sorry? Ten times. Ten times. Uh, yes. Oh, no. Oh, maybe. Five. Hundred times. Five, 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 so I, I dropped down by 
by five, so twenty percent, so eighty percent is what you're saying, right? No, Drop five hundred. Five hundred percent? I lost. I gave up money to be a professor. No, it doesn't work that way. Hundred is the top. Hundred is the top. Ninety-nine. Ninety-nine. Almost. Ninety-seven point five percent. Drop in salary. Uh, but it's because it was something I had wanted to do. Uh, so when I first left uh, university, I wanted to be a professor. Um, the Wall Street thing was kind of, um, and this is very common. I know it sounds very strange. I mean, and again, this is the mindset we're talking about. When I say this in America, people understand it, actually. When I say it here, they go, what? Are you insane? But the Wall Street thing for me was kind of a detour. Uh, I never intended to be a managing director at Citibank. If you had asked me when I was in university that 10 years later, I would be, I was the youngest managing director at Solomon Brothers. If you would ask me if that would happen, I would have just laughed. No interest in this. Uh, but it happened. And I did okay. And I don't, you know, for me, life is not money. Life is doing interesting stuff. And so I went to law school to teach. So I now teach at Cornell. It's a great law school. And I opened up Cornell Tech. Great program. I was asked to come to uh, Ukraine, and people in Ukraine said, can you help us? And I said, well, actually, this is something I do. So why not? Uh, now, is it 10 times harder than I thought? No, it's 100 times harder than I thought. <laughs> uh, the Ukrainian system is got so many blind spots in it that I, I honestly didn't expect it. Like, so the convertible note thing that I mentioned a few moments ago, Shocked me the first time this happened. Somebody goes, what's the valuation? I said, screw that. Said, what do you mean, screw that? I said, who cares? We'll just do a safe. What, a safe? You're talking about like a safe with a, you know, a key? And a, what do you think of a safe? Uh, and I had to explain it. And that's when I began to realize that the system here has got really heavy blind. But that's okay. It just means that I can be that much more helpful. Um, and, uh, you know, a year from now, hopefully, I will be a little less crazy because things will be a little bit more developed and a year after that even better why not um, I should tell you uh, people do ask me this question when I was in Kharkiv I met the deputy mayor there are a number of deputy mayors and one of the deputy mayors said to me why are you doing this what's your angle uh, when I met uh, when I met um, uh, the, the former minister of economics deputy met prime minister um, minister of economics Sorry? No, the prior one. The prior one. Uh, just, just under Grossman Grace, and then. Uh, who? No, 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 no Grossman and then. Uh, no, 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 no. Come on, really? Minister of Small name. Anyway. I'm sorry? No, no, no. It was Grossman and then deputy guy. Yeah. And no, not Yurasko. Uh, Yurasko is finance. Uh, how, can I, how can I know this and you guys don't know this? Uh, oh, it'll come. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The point is, so I met, and they had the same question. What's your motivation for this? And I tried to explain it, and they thought, well, you're insane. So uh, I learned in Hadika, so what I said in Hadika was, I want residency. And the deputy mayor said, oh, well, we can arrange that. So I've been nominated to be an honored resident of Hadika, actually. <laughs> so long as they don't have to ask me this question a lot, then I'm okay. You had a question? Yeah, I had a question. What are things you're looking for in order to make a decision to take a company to a new tobacco area? Sure. Um, so let me tell you what we don't worry about. So we look at all technology. IT, hardware, software, pharma, life sciences, agro, ad tech, fintech. We look at all. What about space? Space, we look at too, yes. Uh, and my mentors reflect this. So for example, uh, we have Rob Shepard is one of our mentors. Rob is one of the leading robotics professors. Uh, he's, a, he's actually a professor at Cornell, but he, he comes out of industry. One of the leading uh, robotics professors in the country who does deep space exploration. Yeah, he's, he, NASA hires him to do uh, like deep space robotics. But he's not the only guy. We have other guys like this too. It's good to be in the university. Um, so we don't worry about the tech. Uh, we don't worry about age. Um, in our first cycle, the youngest was 16, the oldest was 65. So we're not worried about age. Um, we don't worry about geography. Our physical, our physical incubators are in Kiev and Kharkiv. But if there's a really good team in Lviv or Odessa, we'll figure out a way to keep them involved. I have funding to bring them to Ki uh, Kiev for some events, and the rest of it we can do by video conference. 
Um, the one thing that I do focus on, ladies, we don't have enough women who are tech entrepreneurs. It's true in America, 20% in the United States. It's even worse in Ukraine. So if you look on our application, you'll see one of the questions asks, how many are women? And the reason for this is, guys, feel free to apply, but ladies, we really are looking to have you apply too, because I want to get that number up. I know it's a very American way of thinking. Uh, in my program at Cornell Tech, over 40% are women. It's not easy, actually because uh, the, there are so few women in the, in, the, uh, in the space. But we're trying to get more women. Um, in terms of development stage, everything from idea up through capital raise and anything in the middle. If it's a good idea, we're fine with that. If you've got a prototype, that's great. If you have an MVP, that's even better. If you have some sort of customer traction, sure, why not? And if people often think, that having customer traction and even some capital is a better thing, it isn't always the case. Because actually, it's harder for us to unwind problems when you're that far in. So we've seen problems in companies that have traction, but we can just tell that they're going to go here and block and, and not go any further. And if we caught them a little earlier, it would be a lot easier for them to speed up. Um, so anything from the idea stage up to the capital raise is fine. Honestly. So we've had some people that say, you know, I've raised capital, I don't need an incubator. We don't want you if we can't help you. So if you've done a capital raise or you have a business and you say, well, gee, I don't need an incubator, that's fine. We, you know, no reason to apply. But understand, sometimes we will not accept companies, not because they aren't good, just because we don't think we can add value. Or we think that they are so deeply in a mess, we can't unwind it. So we are, looking to, we are looking for companies that have strong teams. So for us, the team is 60% of what I look at. In fact, if you look at the questionnaire, go back and look at the questionnaire. It's, by the way, it's on AO.IN.UA, the application. AO in Ukraine, AO.IN.UA. Uh, you'll see, we don't ask about the tech at all, except uh, in relation to the customer interface. So we ask you to describe the business. Don't use the word tech in the business. We want you to tell us how the product works, how the service works, what the function is. I don't care about the tech. You guys know the tech. I'm not going to figure it out reading an application. And even if I could figure it out, believe me, I don't know a lot about tech. We do, if the product is very specialized, like space, like medicine, we do kick it out to specialists. Not to assess the technology. They really there are there to assess the product, the model, and whether or not there is already competition out there. Um, and we don't just say no, because there's competition. Very often we cycle it back to the applicant and say, are you aware of this? Did you know about that? How are you different from this? Um, so for example, in our first cycle, we had about 25 uh, life sciences and biotech, maybe 30 uh, applicants. Um, we have one of our mentors is the head of the life sciences incubator at Cornell, a guy named Lou Walser. He's been doing this for 40 years. He is extraordinarily good at this. Uh, the other person we brought in was my brother, uh, who was a medical professor. <laughs> uh, and so basically we kicked it out to the two of them and said, what do you think? Again, not to judge the tech, but does this product exist? And is there something here that's cool? Interestingly, they both agreed, almost, almost completely down the line. They both, independently, they both seem to agree. Mm -hmm. um, but that's it. So we're looking more at the team, less at the tech. We want to understand if you know the product and where it is in relation to market demand, what customer, customers are interested in, uh, where it is in relation to competition, uh, and really to get a sense of how you're thinking about the business. Again, it's a, it's a way of judging the team as opposed to judging the technology. That's pretty much it for us. Right? There's not much else. There are no specific scoring metrics that we use. Uh, we are really looking at, does this feel right? The other thing we do, by the way, is I make sure that all the teams that we think are serious get put before the mentors. And I ask the mentors to rank the teams. And the reason is because I don't want to assign you to a mentor that isn't interested in you. Right? I want the mentor to have ranked you in the top three that they are interested in. So you have an enthusiastic mentor, someone who says, look, I really want to work with these guys, as opposed to, oh, God, really? I have to work with these people. 
right? You really want to make this uh, uh, a strong relationship. Good? Okay, how, how many people can be in your, for example, best team, as you think? Um, there is no real size. Um, so, so we look for three skills. Uh, but even then, honestly, we'll take teams that don't have them because we can develop them. Uh, but those three skills can be among three people, two people, five people. Uh, for, so, for example, one of our strongest teams has six people, another one very strong five, another one five, another one three. Actually, Komen is three. Mm -hmm. So it's all over the place. Um, but the three skills we're looking for are, number one, technology, of course, a CTO, someone who knows the tech, mm -hmm. can work with the tech. Secondly, someone who knows the product and marketing, right? Can design the product, adjust the product relative to the market. And third, someone who's going to be good at talking to investors. Third person is usually the CEO. But again, we have taken teams with two of those three, figuring, well, we'll get them up to speed on the third. The other thing that we've had happen, we had one team that collapsed in our incubator. Mm -hmm. So this is, by the way, this is not a, um, this is not a, a social network incubator. Uh, how many of you are familiar with crash tests? Here in Ukraine. Yeah? Well, in Ukraine. In Ukraine and the universities, they will have what are called crash tests. And it's where student teams go up and present their business to other student teams, or the other students who comment. Mm -hmm. right? So the idea, it's like a crash test for a car. right? You take the car, you ram it into a wall, you see if people survive or not. And so I've been to a number of these crash tests. And the comments are usually like, oh, Malati, oh, you're working so hard, oh, this sounds so interesting, oh, how fun, right? In America, when we do these, red faces, tears. One time I saw a guy punch somebody. <laughs> it's tough. It's, well, it's because, why? You know, again, these are people who are passionate about this. And, you know, this is my baby, and you called my baby ugly. <laughs> I'm going to punch you for this. And, uh, and so it's a very different process. By the way, we do this in this incubator. It's, it's a very tough incubator this way. Um, it's, not because we, you know, it's not because it's fun. It's a little fun. But it's not because it's fun. But if your project really shit. No, that, that's the thing. The, I've never seen a project, believe me, if you get into us, you're fine. Uh, we had one team where we literally, I'm not exaggerating, took their business model and went like this. Uh, I'm not. I mean, it, it was very funny because they were. They uh, they had this video that they had made, and they wanted to use this video, and uh, they showed it to me, and I started to laugh because they had made this video like six months ago. I said, "This video is literally a hundred percent opposite <laughs> to what our business plan is," because we had taken it and just bam, flipped it over. So no, that's okay. I'm not. That's why I say to me the team is more important. If the team can get it right, we can help you get there, even if the plan doesn't necessarily work well enough. Um, but the the point is. So the question is, why are we doing this? Right? Why do we you know go in there and punch you a little bit? Well, part of the reason we do it is because it feels this way when you're talking to investors. So today, as I mentioned earlier. There was a 90-minute meeting between a very serious American investor uh, and one of our teams. One-to-one, -one, like this, 90 minutes. He was asking tough questions. If you're not ready for this, so what, have, what, off of what happens in Ukraine? Your baby is really ugly. I really don't like the business plan. What happens? People get very defensive. It's human nature. It makes sense. Uh, and it becomes almost a confrontation. You can't do that, right? You accept the comments. Honestly, if he's asking the question, it's a good sign. He's interested. If you weren't interested, you wouldn't ask. It's a good thing. And maybe the question is wrong or misguided. Your job is to re-guide it. And so we're tough because we're asking the kinds of questions you will be asked by investors. What we're also doing is asking the questions they're thinking and won't ask you. So it's very common to go in and meet a VC, and you do your presentation. They say, thank you very much. Here's a cookie. Goodbye. And you never hear from them again. And you say, whoa, that went so well. We had a five, ten minute meeting. They loved me. They smiled. They gave me a cookie. I never hear from them again. Why? Because they're thinking, 
These people have no clue what they're doing. Uh, why should I bother to explain it to them? What are they really thinking? If, they, if you've got your, uh, your presentation and you've presented it in 10 minutes and the guy is thinking, God, this is terrible, what are they really saying? Are they saying that your tech is bad? No, it's 10 minutes. What do they know? Right? Are they saying that your business model is bad? No, it's 10 minutes. What do they know? Right? This is why the pitch contests make no sense. It's a lot of this. Right? You can't learn this in five minutes. What are they really saying? What they're really saying is you had 10 minutes to explain this thing that you've been working on for months, and you couldn't do it. I'm a reasonably smart guy, and you could not convey to me the excitement for why I should be interested in this. There's something wrong with your team or your way of thinking about the business. It doesn't connect with me. Again, it goes back to my earlier point. It's team, it's also way of thinking. If you can't convince me in 10 minutes that this is a cool thing to do, right? I'm not gonna invest in 10 minutes. But if you can't convince me in 10 minutes this is a cool thing to do, it tells me there's something wrong with the way you're thinking about the business. Or if it's not wrong, at least it's different from how I think about the business. And I've got the money, right? And so that's why we are very tough. We are open. So all the things I used to think as an investor, you know, I would go home and kick the dog and yell at the wall. Now I yell at you. But it's done as a way to educate you on what it is investors think about so that when you have these meetings, instead of being 10 minutes, they are 90 minutes like today. 90 minutes sounds pretty bad. This is a great meeting. If the guy thought it was garbage, he would have left in 15 minutes. 90-minute meeting where, in the end, he says, I want to sign an NDA, I want to see your financials, let's meet next week. That is a home run meeting, as tough as it was for 90 minutes. What do you say if you have a really short time for a presentation in your project? What do I say? Yeah. What do you mean? What you say, what's the main theme of your... Uh, so this is called an elevator pitch. pitch. Right? They, call it, they call these things elevator pitches. So an elevator pitch is where you should explain your business in 30 seconds. Or if you've been in Ukrainian elevators, maybe 60 seconds. I'm kidding. Uh, so 30 seconds. Um, and you want to highlight why you are special. What makes us unique? Hi, so Komen, right? I explained Komen. Hi, we're able to take the normal conversion rate and increase it by 1.5 to 2 times using a widget that is easy to install. We're able to bring to marketers $50 billion in additional revenue. Interested in talking to me some more? <laughs> right, that's what it is. Yep. As I told, I watched your presentation yesterday, and I think the most important thing for a present, for a presenter is the knowledge of English, because a lot of startup who has a bad English uh, had uh, really bad presentation. Yeah. And investor didn't understand uh, what they mean, and it was a very big problem on your yesterday event. Yeah, so, so language is an issue. But again, keep in mind, these sorts of public pitches are artificial. Mm -hmm. right? uh, the people that were, um, so we have, of the seven teams, three have English language issues. So yes, in language important. Right? That's what I said earlier. Someone should speak English. Maybe two of you. By the way, it's not because I speak English and my Russian is really bad and my Ukrainian is non-existent. It's because investors don't speak Russian, typically. Uh, the, 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 the global language of, of capital investment is English. Um, but these three teams of weak English are much more comfortable in small settings. You have to realize, they were talking in front of 230 people. I don't know if you can see. This room was, there were investors. We had like 50 investors. They were standing along the walls, mm -hmm. taking notes and even pictures all along the walls. 250 people. If you're a native English speaker, it's hard to do. Uh, that's very different from this. Okay, so how does it work? For example, if, if founder don't know English, who can explain it? Who can present it? So, to be presented. You have to stay at home. Yeah, uh, uh, so typically we, we you, so we had this in, the, in these three instances. One of the founders, his English was good enough, but not great. Mm -hmm. And so he was able to get through. It wasn't ideal, but it was fine. The other two teams actually made sure that there were English language speakers on the team. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and so either they co-pitched with an English language speaker or they had the English language speaker pitch. Uh, it's not ideal, right? It's not ideal. They're doing it because of the entertainment value. With actual investors, it's gonna be the CEO, mm -hmm. right? But the CEO's English is not that great. They can't do this as well, and so they bring up an English speaker. But in actual meetings, you expect the CEO to be there. It's a time that we run uh, investor asks uh, questions to, to the team, to the founders, and they can't answer that because they don't understand. That didn't happen yesterday. So I, I was there in the I was there in the front row. That that yeah. actually didn't happen. Mm -hmm. What did happen uh, in two cases was they didn't have the English to give a full answer. But they always understand. So if you if you were watching, our, we teach our teams mm -hmm. to do a couple of things. Thank you for the question. That's a great question. Thank you for the question. Uh, you'd be amazed how few teams do this in Ukraine. Uh, even if it's a stupid question. <laughs> Thank you for the question, mm -hmm. right? Uh, number one. Number two, uh, if I understood you correctly, the question is this. Now, you may have taken that as a language thing. That's not what it was. So we had two of the teams say this, actually. If I understand your question correctly, blah, blah, blah. And the reason they do this is two reasons. One is the question isn't always good. Right? It's very kind of, you know, there, there are bad questions. Secondly, you're able to redirect the question in a way that mm -hmm. you can answer that is more valuable. So you ask a question, great, 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 great. If I understand you correctly, you mean white. Hmm. Oh, okay, let's talk about white. And so that was, those were not, those were quite deliberate. And we teach our teams to do this uh, because it's better than saying, what? Mm -hmm. Or what are you talking about? <laughs> you, wanna, you wanna convey, you, know, you wanna take whatever you're thrown and redirect it. How long did the incubator program last? Four months. And uh, how many companies or teams are going to? Well, let me, let me first of all give you, because the timing is a good question. Do you support after you finish? So, so the way our incubation program, good question. If I, if I understand that question correctly, I'm kidding. Uh, so, so let me give you the, ske the schedule first and then the, the other question. So we start off with a six day boot camp here in Kiev. Uh, the boot camp this year will be from October 21st. Uh, it is a tough boot camp. You've been to traction camps maybe. Those are fun, interesting. You have coffee, you look out the window. That's not what these are. Uh, we get you up to speed very fast. But there's a reason for this, because we want to tie you to the mentors. And you gotta realize, right, you're talking to guys who are really busy and really good and very knowledgeable. And what we're worried about is, if we just give you to the mentors, it's gonna be like this. Uh, you won't understand them, they won't understand you, and it's gonna be a very difficult process. And so we get you up the curve fast. Not, not to end it, we repeat many of the same lessons over the next four months. We just want to get a very quick understanding so that we can bring you into the mentors fast. After that, we do four months of lectures and, uh, uh, and workshops. They are done Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at 6 p.m. to 9. And we do this deliberately because you have real lives during the day. And so we do it so you can manage it against your other activities. So 6 to 9, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. In addition, we have two sprints over the course of uh, the four months. A sprint uh, is like a hackathon. It's a 48-hour process where you focus on a particular problem. So for example, we might say you need to focus on part of your business model, or we might say you need to focus on some aspect of your pitch or whatever. And the team gets together. We take you to a separate location. Actually, we did it here. Uh, one of them was here at Hub 4.0. Uh, the first one was uh, actually at a dacha. Uh, mm -hmm. Second one was here. Uh, so we take you to a location like this. We take it over for 48 hours. We give you sandwiches and apples and chai and water and whatever. You bring a pillow and you work for 48 hours, Thursday night to Saturday night. There are mentors who will meet with you every six to eight hours for 15 minutes, mm -hmm. just to make sure that you are, but we don't, want, we don't want to be there telling you what to do. It's your, it's your business. So we'll talk to you every, every uh, eight hours uh, just to make sure we can address issues, but it's your business and you guide it through Saturday. 
we were nervous about introducing sprints to Ukraine because it's never been done before. Hackathons, yes, but not sprints. They were really, really good. They were so good the teams asked for a third sprint. We just didn't have the time to do it. Uh, but the sprints are phenomenal. The team on Thursday is half the team on Saturday. It's, it's really noticeable. Uh, and again, our goal is to get, make you good fast. Right? Four months sounds like a long time. It's not a long time. Uh, so that's the whole period. right? Um, we end with the demo day. Uh, this year's demo day, you, if, you, if you look on the Facebook, uh, our, our Facebook page, there are lots of videos of it. We had um, upwards of 250 people show up in a room that only took 200. Uh, we had something like 1,800 uh, separate uh, uh, views on Facebook because we live streamed it. Uh, we had uh, 40 registered investors, but there were 10 more that we know showed up, give or take. Because really good investors don't like to announce their investors. Uh, so we did not invite, so there are some names that I'm sure you always hear about. These are the guys that do this. We're not interested in those guys, right? Because they do a lot of this and they don't invest. There are some very quiet investors <coughs> that actually put in real money here in Ukraine. Uh, some of them were on our panel. So the very last panel that we had was our venture capital panel. Those guys put money. Uh, and so those are the guys we were inviting. And we had about 40 of them, but there were 10 more that showed up. Uh, and we're not going to say no to an investor. Uh, so we had, a, we had a pretty big turnout. And we'll do the same thing again. So that's, that's the schedule. Do we support them after? Yeah. Today, I spent 90 minutes with one of my teams uh, getting them. Uh, no, first, uh, that was Friday. Uh, so today is the third day. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, we, uh, we continue to work. How um, long? Uh, it depends. It, it's really, it's, there's no formal thing, right? It's going to depend on what they need. What do I mean by that? Uh, for example, um, tomorrow, three of our teams are pitching at the Polish bridge thing, whatever that thing is. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow there's a big pitching thing. So I'll be there. Uh, and for no other reason than uh, afterwards, I'll say, do this better, change that. Or, more likely, I'll be in the audience talking to the VCs. There are maybe six or seven Polish VCs there. And I'm going to pull them aside and say, that guy's from an incubator that actually is a real incubator. <laughs> Ask him tough questions. Don't just simply listen to this. Go and talk to him about his business model, because he knows it. Uh, so we do a lot of that. So, as I understood, your most important thing is to be a teacher. No, my most, most important thing is to, well, it's training, but our, our training is so that the companies will get funding. Creation. Right? Yeah, you don't, you don't, so you don't get a diploma from us. I right? But you don't know how long you support your team that you go through that. Well, no, it's, it's, you're, you're thinking of it the wrong way. Uh, we will support them for as long as they need it. What I'm saying is I don't know if it's this week or next year. Mm. Uh, but... For example, the team that met with Investor today, I, I think I met, they have two other serious investors. These guys are going to get funded in the next two months. It will shock me if they're not funded, I mean heavily funded, in the next two months. They're not going to need me after that. After that, I'm going to be a nuisance. We've taught them, we've trained them, they know their business, they're very good at it. Today, I sat there, I maybe said one minute, 60 seconds I spoke, because there, there was some confusion that, uh, about one issue, uh, it was not a language thing. It was just a concept thing, and so I stepped in. Mm -hmm. uh, except for that, they did it. They were great. Uh, and this team will meet with another group tomorrow. I won't be there. They'll be great. Uh, six months from now, when I am just a distant bad memory, they will be great. That's the key. That's what we want. Um, but if it turns out they have a question or a problem, they will come back to us. We expect it. Huh. So you should say it for both of but you do nothing for infrastructure. I don't understand how does it work. What do you mean that? For example, you grow, grow up to one startup, mm -hmm. and you, they finished your program. Yep. And after that, you don't know how long you will work with this uh, startup. And uh, when they, they will have a process. Why you, you, you will not, you will know about it. How will I know about it? Yes. And how, how? 
What was it? What was your benefit? From? I don't understand. If you so you're, you keep you're you're looking for an angle here, my friend. I don't have that angle. You're asking the same question you asked before, which is what's my economic angle? I have no economic angle, honestly. Give me a Bible. Give me ten Bibles. I have no economic angle, right? Uh, my goal is to make them really, really successful. Now, have I told the teams that once they are successful, they should donate a building at Cornell in my name? Absolutely. Uh, but do I obligate them to do it? No. Do I tell that to all my teams in America? Yes. Do I ever expect it to happen? Not really. Right. So no. This is, you, you know, it's a, again. This is a this is a, this is a concept thing. Here in Ukraine, people think there's an economic angle. Uh, again, you've got to go live in London for a couple of years. Yeah, but that's but, but that's but, see, you're, but you're thinking that this is a you're thinking profit means cash is what I'm saying. Okay. In our case, remember, if I was interested in cash, I'd be back on Wall Street. I'd be back up 97.5%. Right? You are thinking about it again. This is a very, very, it's a very different mindset. This is why. Uh, it's part of American mentality. It's not American, it's part of people who are successful on Wall Street mentality. It's time to give back, right? Time to give back. Especially exactly. for startups. Uh, special, especially for people that are really trying to do cool stuff. Uh, against very difficult hurdles and very difficult odds. The odds and the hurdles in Ukraine are much bigger than in the United States. Uh, this is the time to do it. I mean, look at my mentors. Andy Baines, right? Part of Nest. 3.2 billion to Google. Do you think Andy has to do, is Andy saying, God, I want that 1%. Damn, if I don't get, I'm, I, is that what, John Kim, co-founder of um, uh, Five9, is that what he's saying? Not so much, right? Uh, uh, these guys are not doing this for the economics. Uh, we, we require the economics because we want people to value the advice, right? So we say 1% because you kind of value what you give up, but believe me, it's not the driver. None of these guys will, will, will stay up at night if they lose 1% of some startup in Kiev or Haifa. Well, it sounds, it sounds I know it does. I know it does. How many teams are you going to go So we don't have a number. Uh, we don't have a number. I'm sorry? Any limits? We have no limits. The, I mean, the only outside limit, I suppose, is physical space. So in Kiev, we start running into space problems at 70 or 80 people. So think of that at... Uh, uh, well, it's 12 teams, 5 teams, whatever it is. Uh, and in Kharkiv, we start running in the space limits at about 40 people. I should tell you, we are talking to Shevchenko University. Uh, probably in the next six months, uh, we think we will have the uh, about 200, 200 square meters in the library. So you know, you've got the red building, and then to the right, what color is the library? Yellow. Yellow. Ah, no. What color is it? Is that right? No, 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 no. Where is my jacket? It's um, it, it, it's kind of a yellow. It's kind of a yellow, but not really. Like pinkish? No. Lemonade yellow? Um, <laughs> Orange. Maybe I can bring it around. Here we go. Yeah. No, this is actually quite similar to the color. It's the AO yellow orange. It actually. I, Big coincidence, right? Uh, but it looks very much like this. Uh, so we will be on the third floor of that building, uh, about a third and the fourth floor. We have space on both floors, altogether about 250, I think, square meters. In Kharkiv, we'll be at 450 square meters. Uh, so once that happens, then forget me. We will never be that big. Uh, that would be huge. Uh, but right now, we are in Amerikanski Goma. Biggest space fits about 80, uh, and Harakib about uh, six teams or five, let's say. So 30. How, many, how many teams uh, applied at, at the moment? Uh, I actually don't know. Uh, I don't keep track. Um, last last cycle was 188, but we don't we expect the number to be less than half this time. Mm -hmm. um, it's typical. The way the way uh, applications. This was you know in my program in New York. 
it goes like this mm -hmm. and then it stables out, labels out. Mm -hmm. So it's like this big push, wow, it's new. Uh, and then it drops down. Some, maybe people say, God damn it, I wasn't accepted. I'm not applying again. And then, you know, a year passes and they feel, oh, okay, maybe it's not so bad. And it goes up. I don't know. But it's like this is typical. So I expect the number to be half or less, uh, less than half. 188 was crazy. Are we, are, shocked me. 400, yes? You expect 400? Yeah. Right. Less, less. Less. No, no, no. I, uh, applications. Uh, 188. Nine, nine times. No, one times. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, so I'm 50 teams. Uh, I'm expecting about 50 teams. Okay. Uh, it, it, it would be, it would be, yeah, that would be about right. How do they measure that a startup has failed? How do I measure if startups fail? I don't. <laughs> it's your call. It's your call. If you tell me this thing is dead, then it's dead. I will sit down and ask you why you think it's dead. So it's uh, the team decision. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm just a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm an incubator manager. Right? I'm not a CEO, although sometimes I feel that way. I'm not a banker, although sometimes I'm put into that position. But really, I'm, it's your business. Right? And, so, and so I will never say dead until you tell me it's dead. And honestly, I probably will say not so fast. I'll give you actually a good example. One of our teams, the team blew up. I, I, very intense. Right? And the team absolutely crushed about halfway during the incubator. Uh, it turned out the CEO was very intense. Uh, the chief operating officer that really wanted to do this. Everybody else thought it was a hobby. Mm -hmm. And they were shocked at the amount of work they had to do. Because again, we're working very hard. So, but again, working hard because we want you to be really good after four months. Uh, and the other team members said, <laughs> one of them said, well, I thought when you did a startup, people gave you money and you didn't have to go to work anymore. <laughs> God. Uh, and so the team completely imploded. And the CEO at the time thought, we're dead. And I said, not so fast. And the CEO said, well, where do I get a this and a this and a that? Tech person, a design person, or whatever. Uh, I said, look, you go to enough of these events, you know enough people in this world, you can, and she did. The team she has now is extraordinarily good. Best team there is, really sharp team. So it turned out to be a good result. Uh, and so, no, I will. I don't. I don't call dead, uh, and I will probably even question it. But it's ultimately your decision. <coughs> what else? Well, it's your website. Why is so simple? It's not a website. It's, it's a fine. platform. Fine. Yeah, it's a platform. No, no. Here, here's why. Um, so we started with Facebook. Um, we have a website. Uh, we just haven't rolled it out yet. Uh, and the only reason we didn't roll it out was we were so damn busy. So I have a website. That, I mean, it's 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 completely ready to go. Uh, we'll roll it out soon, I think. Um, one of the uh, one of the reasons why it's more complicated for us is because I am funded by the U.S. government, and so uh, it's actually not because of government. It's because they're worried about things like handicap access. Mm -hmm. Right? It's a very American sort of concern, and so it's got to go through this type of review in Washington. But it's actually done. So what you, what you see, if you put up AO.IN, you get this ugly orange page. <laughs> uh, and that's because it was, for us, we started with Facebook. So look at our Facebook page. It's very cool. Uh, and then if you look at the website when it's up, it's even cooler. Uh, but we ended up slowing down because we had so many applications, because we were really focused on the teams. We put the website back. Uh, it's now ready, actually. But we have to go through this review process in, in Washington, and then, and then we'll rely. But if you want to be modern, if you, if you want to be like a startup in startups, you should. Uh, yeah, start. but honestly, if you think, if you say, God, that sounds like a cool startup, but I saw the teams. Well, it's very simple. You should buy some phone and create the site. No, no, no. You're, you're, missing, you're missing the point. No. It's, not, it's, it's not that. Again, I have to go through a review. Pro Again, we're funded by the government. Mm -hmm. So that's the uh, the delay. It's not it's, the, the website's ready to go. But honestly, if you're the type of startup that says, okay, you've got Andy Baines, John Kim, Bob Sharp, all these cool guys, four months. Now we finish two out of the top ten at Lviv IT Arena. Cool demo day. But God, I hate that landing page. I'm not going to apply. We don't want you. <laughs>
We're okay. We'll live without you. Go, go to one of the other social incubators. Yeah. 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 What advice can you give to a startup that uh, somehow have, has an MVP but without traction, with users or revenue, but uh, uh, with idea and uh, who wants to apply to your to your program? And you, and you have an MVP. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's cool. All right, so so it, it depends on the MVP. So, for example, Nuka. Do you guys know Nuka? Yeah. Everyone knows, knows Nuka, right? Okay, so Nuka was not in our incubator. We weren't around, but my same team did a traction camp, and Nuka was very early on. They were 17 and 16. Uh, and they had their MVP, the, this pen, and they had the coded paper, uh, but they had no way of assessing customers. So what do you tell them to do? Go onto Facebook, go onto Instagram, and start just promoting. Very inexpensive, get it out there, right? Get likes, get comments, get follow-up. You can do this all on Facebook, you can do all this on Instagram, just to get a sense of what market reaction is, right? It's not perfect, but it's going to be global. You'll get feedback, you'll get interest, You'll maybe build up some demand for when you do your Kickstarter. They did, very successful, $150,000 Kickstarter. Uh, and so that's what they ended up doing. So there are ways, to, so what you want to do, it, your MVP isn't really an MVP until you're comfortable that it addresses customer interest. And so if you have no customers, it's not really an MVP. It's something that aspires is almost an MVP, right? But it's not viable in the sense that customers demand it until you are comfortable it's really there. And so the question is, well, are you ready to actually solicit customer interest? Part of that is just picking up the phone and talking to people. Part of that is uh, making sure you understand how to communicate with target customers. Don't talk to Babushka. She's going to always say she loves you, that type of thing, right? Part of it is ways in which to do it, right? So can you do it by Facebook and Instagram? Part of it is the mentors. Right? And so, you know, the mentors are not necessarily customers, but they have a good sense of the market. Right? We're, we're going to tie you up with somebody that hopefully has some sense of your market or knows someone who can help with your market. Uh, so, again, for example, um, Newark. Right? Newark, Newark you know, was one of the top teams at IT Arena. Um, they're an HR tech business. Uh, they, um, we make sure that all the mentors see all the projects. Even if they are not mentoring it, everyone sees everything. And a different mentor saw this and said, wow, this is going to be great in the UK, great in London. And so he's setting them up with London uh, HR organization simply because he thinks it will work well for them, even though he's not one of their formal mentors. He has no economic stake. Uh, even though he's not one of them, because he, wants, he thinks it will work well. Uh, so there are any number of ways. Of, it there's no one way, right? It depends on what it is you're working on. It, it's probably too early to say it's an MVP. Maybe it's a very refined prototype. Uh, but until you actually have customers, uh, or at least feedback from customers, it's kind of like a small MVP, if you know what I'm saying. Um, but again, our focus is to get traction. So in, in, our, in our incubator... Uh, Spock, for example, Spock is a uh, is a um, sorry. Spock? Uh, no, Spock. Spock. Oh no, this is different. This is, yeah, Spock is an online insurance broker. Yeah, uh, it's a digital insurance broker uh, in our incubator. Uh, they launched their, their they will launch their first product in Ukraine in four days. Uh, it will be a micro insurance product. And they're doing it with uh, Colonnade. It's part of the Fairfax uh, Financial Group, huge global financial group. And they will launch in Ukraine. By February of next year, they will launch in the States. Uh, and they've done a fair amount of customer uh, work. Um, they did part of it through Google Docs, again, an online way of sort of reaching out to people. Part of it through face-to-face -face meetings. Some of it really, some of it by Skype. Part of it through, in this case, the Fairfax Group, their partners. Right, who've got offices in the United States. So uh, most professional presentation. Uh, it was very good. It was very good. I mean, I, the, 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 again, you're asking, these are my babies. <laughs> they're, all, they're all good. Um, so, so, again, one of the things we focus on is just this, customer traction. 
and uh, Komen uh, picked up uh, their first serious project this um, this month. They will start generating revenues. It's not a lot, two, three thousand dollars, but again, that's not bad to start. Newark is picking up. Uh, they just picked up Shell and um, uh, the drink, um, Red Bull, uh, as employment, and they're now rolling it out at Shevchenko. And you'll like this. At the demo day yesterday, they picked up two more clients. Uh, Harkov Polytechnic. Uh, agreed to sign up with them, and KPMG agreed to sign up with them uh, and use them as, uh, it's kind of an early pilot, but still uh, uh, as an early pilot to roll out their system. Happened literally at the demo day. It's kind of cool. What else? One more question about organization, mm -hmm. education. For example, you, I remember that you teach all team, and every member of the team must be Present on the founders, but for example, if you if someone can't be present, so it depends. Know. It depends. Um, so we require that the founders attend all the meetings. Uh, now, there are exceptions, and it's very simple. Uh, we're changing the way you think. We're really changing the way. Believe me, if you're in this incubator, you will, we will record your questions and you will laugh at them five months from now. I'm teasing. But no, seriously, it, we changing the way you think. And you cannot do this remotely. This is not lectures. This is not lectures. We're really working with the teams. And we're changing the way you think about the business. And you cannot read someone's notes and go, oh, that's what he meant. It doesn't work that way. You have to engage. Now, are there going to be times when people can't attend? Sure. We're not crazy. We understand this. Uh, so Newark, for example, had uh, some business in, in Poland, made sense. Spock, actually, some of the team w went to Hartford, Connecticut. That was great. We love, we're not going to get in the way of any of that. Right? Biosense uh, went and did some work in, uh, in Poland. Boom, we're all on board for that. So we're not nuts about it. But the point is, we don't want people to just kind of show up every week, one day, and yeah, so we had one team that said, well, you know, one founder will show up Wednesday, second founder Thursday, third founder, Friday, and then we'll talk on Saturday. No, that doesn't work, mm -hmm. right? Um, so it depends on the situation. We had one team where the CTO wasn't in Ukraine. Uh, that's fine. I'm less worried about the CTO. I'm much more worried about the investor and the business product person mm -hmm. uh, in this case. It, but it depends. For example, if uh, we have two members of of the team and one is absent. How does it work? How well, it depends on the work? people and who they are. I, how can I work with, with the team when I go on? No, what I'm saying is, depends. So are you the CEO? Yeah. You're the CEO. For example, well, are you, who is the other person? Is he, this, is he a chief operating officer? Mm, CTO. CTO. Yeah. Uh, and what is the C, is CTO is in a different country? No, she's in another city. Okay. Sure. So she can join by video conference, right? Right? It's not important, but I well, but she can. All the yeah, but she can. Mm -hmm. And for things like sprints and boot camp, she can come here. Mm -hmm. okay. And if the answer is no, I won't come to Kia for sprints. Honestly, she's not dedicated enough. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, in a funny way, these requirements—it sounds a little strange, but you know, it's kind of the. The, the, the mirror image of your point. I don't get paid. Mm -hmm. Andy Baines doesn't get paid. John Kim doesn't get paid. Right? We're doing this because it's a cool thing to do and we want to see real successes. If you're not going to put in the time, why should we? It's very simple. Uh, and so we don't, we, again, I don't force you to show up. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. We had one team that said, we don't want to disclose all the information to you. We're nervous about disclosure. I said, fine, tell me what you want. You will get out of this program what you put in. The teams that did the best, Spock, Komen, Newark, hardest working teams in the incubator. The teams that did the best in the demo day were the teams that put in the, it's very obvious when you see them pitch. Okay, why did you ask in this form, uh, did you certificate your business or your ideas, or did you pat patent? Patent. patent. Uh, someone asked that question, right? Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know. What's your 
want to be patentable. No, patent, patent. patent. Yeah. Why do you find your idea or you have the flesh on in your form when you want? Oh, 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 in the form, in the application. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a patent? Um, there, there, uh, let me be very clear about the application. There is no wrong answer in the application. Nobody is excluded based on an answer in the application except for one question, the last question, which is, do you commit to have the founders participate? If the answer is no, don't even apply. Don't even apply. <laughs> I mean, if I get to that, I don't get, we had some cool teams that had really cool tech, and they couldn't say yes. And we said, not for us. Go, go to one of the cute incubators. Um, well, so it's important for you. Again, it's important for us because you're not going to learn it. We don't want to spend a lot of time teaching one guy and having the other two people say, <laughs> right? It's, it makes no sense to us. We're here to make the next, we are hunting unicorns. We are here to make the next big successful businesses in Ukraine. Maybe we show the answer about uh, this point. Oh, the patent. Yeah. So, so the patent point, so we just want to know if you've done it or not. Uh, honestly, we almost don't care. Uh, why? Because if you patent it, you've patented it in Ukraine. Yeah. Ukrainian patents are kind of worthless. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in a way, there's a view among U.S. patent lawyers that Ukrainian patents hurt you more than help you. And that's because it's less clear that you can patent it in America if you patent it in Ukraine. And Ukrainian patents are not recognized in the United States. And who are we kidding? The court system here barely recognizes it in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. So, so, so I mean, let me finish though. So, so the point is, we're asking it to see if it's there, but we don't really. It's not a big thing for us. And just for next question is, do you have a plan to patent? Yeah. So we just want to know if you're, you're thinking about patenting. I don't think about it. Well, no. Not everyone does. I mean, you, for example, if it's code, are you going to patent code? Oh, no. No. You, don't have no you, can't, you can get no patent for code. Uh, which, and, and again, we're trying to understand how you think. So uh, you might decide that uh, one third of your product is patentable and two thirds are not. Well, we want to know this. If you've made that decision, it's good for us to know that you think this one third is unique and patentable and these two-thirds less so. So, but whether or not you actually have patented or not, I don't care. Charles, thanks yeah. so much for your dedication, for Thank your you. time, what you're doing. I'm very passionate about it. I have to run. Okay. And uh, sorry for that, but I can't wait to apply for your program. Please. So, we, so again, October 8th, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. 5 p.m., not 5.01, Komen, right? Who you saw yesterday, really cool tech. They were application number 188. Last, they were the last application in. We almost didn't accept them because they actually came in like a little bit late. So please don't be late. But if you are late, be coming. Be really cool. Right. Thank you. Uh, Charles, yeah. about uh, uh, application question, uh, yeah. do you or any of your other teammates um, applied before to any incubator? Yes. Before. Yes. Uh, the question is, uh, is the same idea? Uh, no. No. Not any, any, any idea. idea but we, we, experience. We, just, we just want to know if you've been somewhere before. And, but and let me explain why. Um, this is going to sound a little harsh, and I don't intend it this way. But my colleagues and I have come here to Ukraine again many times, and we've done uh, traction camps with other incubators. Uh, where, you know, it's called speed dating. You know speed dating where there are like 10 different tables, 10 mentors, and people do 20 minutes or 30 minutes or whatever, and they rotate around, right? Um, and what we have found is, is that in many cases, we tell the teams, what he just told you, completely wrong, flip it around. And that's because what they're told might make sense in Ukraine. It makes no sense in the United States. I'll give you a good example. Uh... One of our teams had a pitch deck. They had won, they had been in other incubators, they had won other awards, and they show this four-year timeline at the, end, at the end of the slide. Right, this is the slide, you know, the, the timeline and the whatever. And they're very proud of this. And I told them, this is the kiss of death. 
Anything more than two years, you are dead in America. Why? Because people say, what, you're still in an incubator after two years? What are you, sleeping all the time? <laughs> right? Uh, now, Ukraine is different. Right? The economy is different. The circumstances are different. I understand this. We can explain this to investors. Right? But you don't want to lead with a deck that has four years on it. So I told this team, get rid of everything except for the last centimeter on the right. Send this slide to your mother. She'll be very proud. But I just want the last centimeter on the right uh, so that we can go ahead and show. They were quite surprised because the other incubators said, oh, this is great. It shows your history and commitment. To it. No, it is the kiss of death in America, for example. So we just want to know, do you have experience? That's good. Uh, we want to know, you know where you've gotten this experience uh, so that we just have a better sense of the team. Make sense? But again, there's no, it's not a bad thing, right? If you say, I went to blah, blah, incubator, we go, oh my God, it's not, no, we don't do that. Oh, it's okay if, uh, if I uh, write there that I was uh, in incubator in the last, uh, like, 2013, yeah. uh, and the result was like this. Uh, I worked at those projects, and the result was, but uh, for now, I am applied with uh, uh, another idea. Sure, okay. no problem, no problem. Okay. Again, we're, we're, we're trying to understand the team. There is no wrong answer. We just The more you can tell us about you, the better, actually. I mean, the, 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 the worst applications are the ones with very little information because we don't discern the best. We, it's, uh, they, they're not saying anything because there's something funny here. We don't know. We just don't know. We don't have time to interview teams. Uh, sometimes we do it, but, uh, but it's quite rare. Good. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, I also have a question. Is there any chance if uh, only one person will apply? Yes. Any, any it, it's possible if you are the if you are the if it's a one person team, mm -hmm. then yes. We have no limit. One person is fine. I will tell you it's unlikely, not because we have a limit, but because it's unlikely that one person has the three skills. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's not that we don't say one is bad. We say, well, does this person have the background to do CTO and marketing and investors? And also, because there's so much work, does he have the stamina as a single person instead of dividing it among three to do this? Uh, but we don't say one is bad. It's going to be more this type of thinking. Well, I, I applied this one. You did? Mm -hmm. Good, thank you. Thanks. You're the guy. I'm kidding. <laughs> Um, we usually see lots of applications in the last week. It, it like doubles. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I stopped. I, if someone had asked before how many applications. I stopped looking because it, it, it's, it's meaningless. Every day it just goes boom, boom, boom. So. Okay, by the way, is it okay when uh, uh, there are no CTO, I mean, with this title in the uh, application form, but only a person who hired to develop some stuff? That's fine. We're, we're not looking for titles. Uh, we're looking for functions. Mm -hmm. uh, we might suggest to you that at some point you should have a CTO, not because we think it's important, but because investors will say, well, where's, your, where's your tech guy, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. What else? So how your education works? What are the steps of the education? How does it work? So you mean in terms of? Um, education uh, in incubator. What is the main programs? What is the main uh, project? So, so, so you should actually, you should go on our Facebook page. We mm -hmm. actually have a, a sample syllabus. Find it. Uh, t there's an information section, uh, and it's got a sample syllabus in it. And it, mm -hmm. so basically, uh, during the first six days, we are again we cover almost everything: uh, marketing, design thinking, finance, pitching, business structure, product development, all of it. Very fast, mm -hmm. right? Just to get you up the curve, and then we go through the same thing over the next six weeks uh, in more detail. So we start off with uh, you. You, you saw, saw uh, Andre uh, Milanevsky yesterday. Mm -hmm. He was really good, right? So he teaches our design thinking classes. We have about mm -hmm. six of those mm -hmm. uh, very early on. Design doesn't mean like design how pretty is the page. It's really you know designing the product and fitting the product to the market and the customer. Is what we're talking. So when they say design thinking, it's not oh nice pretty graphics. 
It's how do you shape uh, the product and the business to reflect the demands of the market. And a Andre is great at this. Uh, and so, and Andre does this actually in Ukrainian or Russian or both or either, I think Ukrainian, uh, which we're fine, of course happy with. So it, it's not even a language issue. Um, uh, the, the, the boot camp itself is run by a guy named Felix Litvinsky. Felix was also there yesterday. He, he co-taught the pitching session with Will mm -hmm. Mercer. Uh, and Felix and I run the boot camp. Felix is in the front, I'm in the back. But uh, it's sort of 60-40 Felix uh, for that first six days. Uh, we start with design. Uh, we then start going into just basic product concepts. So product fit, understanding your market, understanding uh, the demands of your customers, uh, really understanding who your customer is. So who do you think the customer is? So we have this one AFib detector, right? Heart detector. Who do you think their customer is? This actually came up yesterday in one of the questions. Mm -hmm. So who's the customer, right? I've got this, this detector uh, that detects abnormal heartbeats, and they want to sell it in America. And what it is is it's called AFib, atrial fibrillation. And AFib is an irregular heartbeat that very often you don't know about. 40% of the people with AFib don't know it. Uh, and if you don't treat it, it increases the risk of heart attack by two times. It increases stroke by five times. So you want to know it if you can. And this, with a greater than 99% accuracy, uh, continuous monitoring will pick up AFib. Uh, OK. Who's your customer? Who's your market? Who are you selling to? Older people. Older people, yes. Older people are definitely people, and overweight people, right? Elderly, yeah. overweight people definitely are people who are going to use this product. Are they your customer? Mm -hmm. Hospitals. Okay, well, hospitals are important because they are the ones with doctors, perhaps, specialists. Bingo. It's insurance companies. Yeah. And uh -huh. the, actually, the questioner didn't understand this yesterday. Because if you pay much, they can have insurance because you like to you risk the area. Well, not even that. It's even more basic. So one of the questions yesterday of the AFib guy, the questioner didn't understand the answer. Again, this is why these things are a little artificial. Uh, and the AFib guy said, well, we have to deal with the insurance companies. And, and the reason is this. Insurance companies have a list of prescribed products. If you're not on the list, they won't insure you. Yeah. If they won't insure you, the doctors won't prescribe it because it's too expensive. If the doctors won't prescribe it, the end users, the sick people, won't get it. So your customers are actually your insurance market. So when they were talking yesterday, they said, well, we've talked to the insurance market. And the people said, what about the patients? And, and, and there's a, but pay, who cares about, actually, who cares about the patients? If the insurance market doesn't accept it, it'll never get to the patient. Yeah. So, so again, we spend time on this. Um, your part, Biosense. Biosense is this um, uh, grain fungus detector. And they have this uh, box, and you're able to take grain and you shove it into this plastic vial. And you pop it into the sensor, and 25 minutes later, it tells you, is there a mycotoxin, this fungus or not? Right? Very fast, very effective. And uh, every time that you do it, you have to you take this vial, and you pop it in. It checks it. You throw the vial away. You check it again. New vial, plastic uh, tube, right? So they have uh, online licensing for uh, some of the apps and some of the additional measurements that you can buy from them. It has like $10 a month charge, something like this. They have the machine itself, which costs, I don't know, two, three, four hundred dollars They have these plastic vials. How do they make their money? The Sorry? Well, the farmers are the ones, but I mean, what, for what are they getting? Farmers are going to pay them. Not just farmers, by the way. Traders, exporters, importers, all these are people that are worried about them. And farmers. But how are they making their money? What is, where's the money coming from? Not, not the people, but what is the... What is the part of the business that's generating money? Cartridges. Sorry? Cartridges. The cartridges, yeah. In fact, there's an argument. There's an argument for just giving away the, the box for free or at cost mm -hmm. because they make all their money on the cartridges. This was not part of When they joined our incubator, that wasn't their plan. Mm -hmm. Their plan was, here's this, and we make our money on this big box. And we said, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. It's the cartridges. And when we ran the model for them, you see the cartridge number goes like this, right? Because they are they, they are not reusable. 
And more importantly, patent question, more importantly, European patent on the cartridges. How cool is that? So they have a system that only uses a certain cartridge, and they have a patent on the cartridge. Damn, that's a business. These are the guys that need to have their tech verified. We're going to get their tech verified. Your question about follow-up? Cornell will help them get their tech verified in the next three months, maybe, we think. We, we, we don't know exactly, but we we're working with them. Four months, two months, whatever. And once their tech is verified, these guys are taking off. It's like a shuffle in a gold mine. I'm sorry? It's like a shuffle in a gold mine. Everybody's looking for, for, for gold, but shuffle measures. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Yes, it's the shovel. The, or, or yeah, the people that made the biz, biggest money in California was it the gold miners? It was the saloons. It was the the, the saloons? Yeah. Um, not the so. Um, and the point is, so we're doing all of this stuff. We do we do we have a section on regulation. You may have heard yesterday someone said, "Are you GDPR compliant?" They said yes. They said, "How do you know this?" Just because we were taught about this in the incubator. We have uh, two sessions on GDPR. And on privacy, uh, we also—they didn't say this yesterday, but we also have a GDPR lawyer that works with them. Uh, he's actually an American guy. Uh, they should have said this, uh, but they just didn't didn't say it. Uh, but we have GDPR special counsel uh, on this too. Um, I'm a law professor. Yeah, that's that's the one area you you don't worry about. Um, we have a section on Ukrainian regulation. We have two sections on that. Uh, we, we bring in some Ukrainian lawyers who talk about uh, Ukrainian regs. Um, we have uh, sections on marketing, uh, branding, actually. Branding is very weak in Ukraine. So we, we bring in some specialists to do branding, uh, uh, actually outside our mentors. Uh, we're thinking, actually, of bringing in Federer. Uh, Mr. Fed, you know, Mr. You know Federer? Yeah. Cool guy, right? So we're thinking, we've talked to him. Uh, he's the guy that has the bone Is his business card. Uh, his his office is right over near near these strip clubs, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, we've talked to him. If not him, one of his staff may come in and do a special branding thing for us. Mm -hmm. But we have, separate from that, we have a different branding person that does branding. So we, <coughs> cover, we, we cover finance. We cover you know safe and convertible notes. We cover capital structure. Uh, there's very little we don't cover on the floor. Are there any preferable themes uh, for startups? Uh, so, do you uh, choose uh, some startups uh, in perspective from the market that is uh, hype or something like that? No, we really don't. I, again, we, we're, uh, of course. What areas? Sorry. What what is uh, what areas are preferred? They're real, again, if you look at our seven companies, they're all over the place, mm -hmm. right? We have you know Komen, which is this you know widget conversion thing. Uh, ad tech, kind of sexy, but you know, we have HR tech. HR tech is very crowded. In a way, it was negative, right? Mm -hmm. We were worried that these guys couldn't break into the market. But we looked at the team, very strong. We looked at the model, very strong. We said, okay, fine, we'll go mm -hmm. with this. But in fact, HR tech is too hot right now. Uh, FinTech, uh, insurance, very hot right now. But this FinTech model, quite new, quite, you know, the problem is potentially open to competition. Mm -hmm. So we had to spend a lot of time thinking through, you know, competitive breaks and, you know, how are they going to distinguish themselves. Uh, Icardi, AFib. There's an AFib detector here in Ukraine. It's called cardioma. Right? Okay, how yeah. does these guys fit relative to cardioma? We <coughs> think these guys have got better tech, but who knows? Um, uh, FI tech. FI tech is air gas sensors. Boring as hell. Boring as hell. The most profitable of all the businesses. Right, the revenue is very low, but their <laughs> margins are huge. Uh, what are these? These guys make these little films that appear in these air gas sensors, right? And the films inter interact with air and tell you bad quality, good mm -hmm. quality, whatever, right? It costs like five grivna to make one of these things. They sell them on average for thirteen dollars. Okay, so the revenues are garbage, but their their margin is like ninety nine percent. So he said, okay, and, and honestly, I knew nothing about this. Bob Scharf, one of our mentors, knows this business. And he said, these guys are going to be small, they're going to be low revenue, but seriously profitable. He said, okay, fine, we'll take them. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, so we're all over the place. Uh, 
there, um, there's enough. Now, I will tell you, what, what won't we cover? We won't cover gambling, probably, because, uh, again, we're funded by the U.S. government. We won't cover porn, because uh, we're funded by the U.S. government, uh, probably. Um, so things like that. But other than that, oh, we won't do military. Right? Because, not because of us, but because it actually has Ukrainian issues. Uh, you know, the Ukrainian export regulations and the, and the you know, national security. And honestly, we're not here to export any of this stuff. I, I, by the way, I should make something very clear. We are not an export model. Remember, we are not looking to take businesses out of Ukraine. We're not looking to take tech out of Ukraine. We are looking to build the businesses here. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that in the United States, over 85% of businesses that are incubated in a city stay in the city. Why? Their friends are here. Their family is here. The economic opportunity is here. The incubator platform is here. They don't need to go to Poland. Without this, they go to Poland. They go to Finland. They go to Germany. Why? Because they don't have the, the, the platform here. Uh, you guys, I'm sure, have friends who have said, I have to go to Poland. Why? Really? Because you like, you like kielbasa? Is that why you're going to Poland? Right? No. I need to go to Poland because of the money. Or I need to go to Poland because of the incubator. I met a guy um, in Kiev two years ago. This was really what started me thinking. Uh, educational tech, coolest tech ever. I met him at the Kiev Smart City Conference. And he described the tech. I said, this is great. I'd love to see it. Can I come down to your offices? No, I'm not in Kiev. Or where, where are you? Odessa, Lviv? No, I'm in Finland. I'm in Helsinki. Why? Do you need the money? Is it a funding thing? He goes, no. I've got investors. I've got customers. i got everything. Then why are you in Finland? Is because if I tell people that I'm from Kiev, they don't take take me seriously. They don't know who I am. Okay. There and, or here. Sorry. People there or here. Outside. Outside, outside of Ukraine. <laughs> and and so, and so one of the things we're also trying to do is create a platform that people will recognize, right? So that now when you say I come out of AO, people will go, Oh yeah, okay, I get these guys, right? Uh, and and so you know, another to, to your point earlier, kind of you know what is driving us. Well, we want to be successful. Putting aside economics, we want to be successful. Your success is our success, mm -hmm. right? If you blow up, people aren't going to take us as seriously. Mm -hmm. We are Y Combinator 20 years ago. We are tech stars 20 years ago. Now, 20 years ago, tech stars, no one knew who these guys were. How did they get successful? They were really good. Uh, and that's kind of the way we think about this. Make sense? Yes. Do you do another... American incubators, incubators in uh, Ukraine. We're the only ones uh, that I'm aware of. Uh, now, I will tell you, there are different models here. There's, a, there's a, an incubator called Demium. They are Spanish. Uh, what they do is that they're actually a pre-incubator. What they do is they do a two-day hackathon, and then they pick the best people, individuals. They bring them together and form teams there around ideas that they think are interesting. So we're, we're not doing this, right? We're looking for the team already. We're looking for the business already. So Demium is kind of a pre-incubator. They feed into us. Um, they are not US style, though. I mean, it's, it's a Spanish model, uh, and their mentors are really local. They're not Spanish. They're Ukrainian, right? So that it, that's, we view it. They're kind of like, so you, you guys know Yep, mm -hmm. right? Uh, yeah. Andre uh, Zykin. Yep, I love, right? They're kind of like a non-university Yep. YEP is a pre-incubator uh, program, great program. They feed into us. Uh, Demium is the same type of program. They mm -hmm. feed into us. Uh, there is something called Blue Lake uh, that was announced um, uh, three months ago. Uh, they, uh, they, they promote themselves as having ties to London. Uh, from what I can tell, they don't. They are really local. Uh, they want to bring companies to London to pitch, mm -hmm. uh, but they are not, they're, they're brand new. They haven't yet done it. So, um, but they're not American style, and again, the mentors are all local. Um, uh, the, the international piece is they're thinking of bringing people. So, so you can tell, when I say I don't compete, I've met with all those guys, right? Because we want to work together, and so Demium feeds into us, mm -hmm. Yet feeds into us, right? We want... They are a little earlier. We want to raise them up. Blue Lake, we will end up sending them teams. We will, you know, our teams will incubate separately. We'll take some of their teams and bring them into AO. And if they have, if they have really good traction in London, we'll send our teams with them. Mm 
we're okay with that. Right? Anything, for, anything to help them. Uh, it's like this thing tomorrow, this Polish, whatever this thing is, this Polish-Ukrainian bridge thing. Uh, three of the teams that are there are our guys. We're more than we're thrilled to support them and get them in there. Uh, even though it's it's not AO, it's still something that's good for the teams. Um, but in terms of U.S. style, we haven't seen anything. Uh, there are other incubators funded by USAID, but they're not they're they're not American style incubators. There's one in uh, there's one here in Kiev. Uh, there's one in Mariupol, uh, believe it or not. Uh, there's one in Kramatorsk, uh, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, so they get some funding from the U.S. government, but they're not U.S. style incubators. Mm -hmm. What else? Anything? Well, yes. What about uh, grant supports for their teams uh, if they uh, will uh, submit some uh, grant program yes. from the uh, uh, U.S.A. or? Yes. Uh, so do you can you get grants? Yeah. The answer is a resounding maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, what do I mean by that? So CEP funds me, right? The, com the Competitive Economy Program, which is part of USAID, funds my incubator. They have funding for grants. They have funding for startups. There is nothing in their program that says that AO companies get grants. But you can figure it out. Mm -hmm. I have two companies, one that I've never heard of, and one that AO has worked with for four months, and I know Chuck, and I fund Chuck, and I know the mentors, and I fund the mentors, and I know the demo day, and I fund the demo day. Who are you more comfortable with? So and there's no guarantee, because they do have their own requirements. In other words, if you're in AO, you don't automatically get funded. You don't want to think that. They have their own process, their own review, mm -hmm. their own criteria, but it would be against human nature to think that there isn't an advantage to come out of an incubator that they know. Uh, I will tell you, the guy that runs the grants is also the guy, the project manager for the incubator within USAID, the same guy. Uh, the other thing you should be aware of, there is a national startup fund here in Ukraine. You know about this, right? right it's coming out of the Ministry of Finance. Mm -hmm. uh, it's $14 million, roughly. The money does not go away at the end of this fiscal year. The money stays, it's part of the fund, it will continue into the next fiscal year. There is an understanding that an additional two to three million dollars will be added next year and the year after. So it potentially goes higher. There is no requirement that the money be spent, however. If you're an early stage startup and you meet the basic requirements, which look remarkably like the AO business requirements, uh, you get $25,000. Grant, no equity, straight grant. If you meet your minimum hurdles, you get an addition, you can apply and get an additional 50, total of 75. Plus, there is a matched grant idea. It's not yet been finalized. So if a foreign investor or a Ukrainian investor, I'll put in 100,000, they will, on a case-by-case -case basis, think about matching it for 100,000. This program is likely to open up in the middle, mid to late November. Uh, the website, because you like websites, the website's actually ready to go, uh, and it will be opened up soon. It's not there yet. Uh, it'll be opened up soon, uh, and they will begin to take applications mid to late November. So keep an eye on it. I'm on the board of super, I'm on the supervisory board. I don't make funding decisions, but there is, I'm, I'm the token American on this board. There's mm -hmm. seven of us. I'm the American, and then six Ukrainian folks. Um, uh, if you're ever interested, again, the process is quite uh, normal. It's very private. It's a very private market. Or it's not government. Even though it's in the government money, don't think of this as government structure. The people who are on the board are largely f uh, finance people. Uh, mm -hmm. So Victoria Tagipka, TA Venture, she's on the board. Uh, Lena from Horizon Capital, she's on the board. So it's very, very privately modeled. So how can I find mm -hmm. the website? Mid-November. Put it in your calendar, mid-November, look for the website. Uh, on your Facebook page? Uh, we'll down, I, I'll link it. Yeah, I'll link the links up there. Uh, I'll link it. Um, uh, but also, if you look for just uh, Ukrainian Innovation Fund, is it there already? Um, I found some information. Yeah, yeah. But the, 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 the website, it's called... It's called, it's, yeah. it, it's called in Ukrainian the Innovation Fund. In English, like... They call it the Innovation Fund in, in Ukraine, Innovatsia Fund. Mm -hmm. But in English, it gets translated as the Startup Fund. 
I believe. Good. And you're the vote on this one. I'm on the I'm on the board. But again, I but I don't make decisions. Mm -hmm. So I, again, I want to be very clear: no conflict, no I mean nothing really. I'm very American this way. I make no decisions. Uh, it's done by a separate committee. Uh, so, so there's no tie between AO and us, except that I'm on the board. It's the, I mention it just because, number one, I don't want you to be surprised. But number two, it's because this is why I can tell you about the timing. Uh, but um, so look for this fund. This fund is great. This is brilliant. Uh, uh, Minister Makarova, uh, Ma Ma Markarova, the Makarova, finance that's... minister, mm -hmm. brilliant to have done this. And uh, the administration to support it is great. Uh, this will be hugely valuable for Ukraine. November, mid-November, mid-November. Mm -hmm. mid uh, this will be hugely valuable. There are parallels. Norway has an innovation fund. Israel has the Jerusalem fund. Uh, uh, the United States doesn't have a fund, but through tax breaks, we provide the same types of economic incentives. It's a brilliant thing to do. Uh, and so this time next year, you'll see a lot more activity. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Uh, actually, one other bigger question. Let me be very clear again. No conflict. Mm -hmm. I just want to be very clear. Okay. Yes. Um, well, uh, I was like uh, yesterday. Uh, you know, to us. Yes. Oh. I was a bit uh, in a bit uh, you know, rush. I'm not sure that I described everything uh, in the right way to. Um, Reapply, no problem. In order to get the only, the only thing that I want to, to know will I get the result. I mean, the, because uh, you mean if you reapply, will you get in? I have no idea. No. I mean, uh, what should I do really exactly in order to get the you know to listen to the? So you're you're thinking about it the wrong way. Maybe. No, no, I'm I'm telling you, you're thinking about it the wrong way. Um. The questions there, again, there's no right or wrong. Mm -hmm. We're trying to understand what's going on in your mind about the business. Mm -hmm. So if you've answered the questions in a way that you don't think reflect your understanding of the business, you've done yourself, it's, it's not good, right? You've created a problem for yourself, right? In other words, we're not scoring. This is not, you know, three, two, seven, six, four, two. Okay, he's got 51, he's in. It, it doesn't work that way. We're trying to understand, do you think about the business in a way that we think we can work with? And if you, do, if you haven't described it properly, uh, then chances are you won't be admitted. Yes, this, this, uh, this is why I'm Worked, if you did it quickly, then you might not have done it. I mean, you know, you have, you know, we, we our applications have been open for two months. We well, have just an membership. We're just a membership. Well, my current service is you know, the rules of the basic services. I understand. We have another week. Yeah, I know. I'm not doing it yesterday, another week. Yeah. You have time. Yeah. I, again, you know, this is a funny th So if you haven't seen the application yet, guys, uh, take a look at it. It's completely different from any application we've seen in Ukraine. It's a very American application. Yeah, it's really the same role as this of YC. Bingo. It's, it's, it, looks, it looks like YC and Techstar. So, what are we doing? Again, we're actually having you start thinking about your business differently before you're in the incubator. The application, actually, is a, a, training, is a, is a training thing. Mm -hmm. So, do not take it lightly. We don't take it lightly. I read every application, I read every application minimum of twice, uh, and very often three, four times. It was funny, I said this in Kharkiv, and some guy stood up and said, do you remember my application? <laughs> and I actually do. I, I, so there were actually two guys, and he said, mine is this. And I said, yeah, you're the guys that do this and this and this and this and this. And I was like, whoa. Because no, we really look at these things. Uh, so if you don't think it properly reflects your business, Fix it to properly reflect your business. Okay. Yeah. 
What else? Nothing? Yes. Are there any restrictions about team size? No. Maybe two people or three. We don't. He's, he's one. Uh, again, the only reason why one is bad is not because of one. It's he because we don't know time. that one has the three sorts of skills I was talking about, mm -hmm. right? So we want to know who's, who's the tech guy, who's the marketing guy, who's the investor guy. Um, but, you know, Komen was three. Uh, they did very well. These are the widget guys. Um, Spock is five, I think. Newark is six, maybe. Five or six, I can't remember. Uh, so the sizes are all over the place. There's no, there's no good or bad size. Uh, Icardi is seven, maybe. Um, uh, but again, we're not worried about. We're really not worried about the size, you know. Um, uh, except if the skills are met. Again, okay, we're more interested in are all the different skills covered. Uh, and again, if you don't do it, it's not. That you, there's no such thing as a wrong answer. All right. It's not that you're dead. We just have to sort of think about this. Okay, well, he can do investor, he can do tech, but he can't do marketing. Hmm. Is that going to be a big problem? And we'll think about it. Right. Uh, and uh, again, we've, we've had cases where teams have come in and the teams have shifted over the four months because they realize. And we'll tell them. We'll say, hey, this looks really cool, but your marketing guy stinks. You need to bring in somebody else, right? or you need to tell this marketing guy to really start focusing, and they will. Uh, better that it happens in the incubator than it happens one year mm -hmm. from now. Good. Yeah, thank you. I, I want to only keep people people here. I know you have to go; it's getting late. But uh, but thank you. Thank you. If you have any more questions, first of all, please apply. Really, I like to read yeah. this stuff. Uh, I'm going to be on a plane on October 8th, and if there are no applications, I will have nothing to do for 10 hours. <laughs> so apply so I have something to do on the plane for 10 hours. And ladies, definitely apply. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thanks very much. Thank you. Да, ну и без толку удобно something to think about? Uh, as a person who, know, who knows better, what would you recommend to, uh, what resources or maybe groups would you recommend?
meant to uh, make one, one mentality, like mindset, but startups more useful than the system. No? No. I mean, is it not just the system? Yeah, I know. Look, 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 people, there are a lot of books that people read. I'm, honestly, I don't spend a lot of time. Uh, and, and, uh, uh, so there's one book that no one reads, actually, because it's very old, meaning it's from 2000. <laughs> but it's actually the one book I've read that I actually like. It's called The New, New Thing. The, the New, New Thing. Uh, and that actually, it's a book from maybe 99 or 2000. And that actually is a cool book. And now it's dated, so you'll read it in the examples of a little old. Uh, but it, it's uh, it gives you a really good sense of how the, the idea and the commercialization process works. And it's done be, one of the because it's done in sort of 2000. It's before a lot of the startup noise. I mean, people thought about startups, but they got the noise has gotten very big in the last five years, right? Five, six, seven years. And so it was before that period, uh, which is mm -hmm. why it's, I think, a little bit more of a balanced book. Uh, and it's easy to read. So Michael, the new, yeah. new thing. And because it's so old, you can probably find it for free online somewhere. Mike Olders, yeah? Sorry? Mike Olders. Olders? I don't remember who it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Michael Hill? Mm -hmm. The new, new Lewis, thing. Lewis, yeah. Lewis. Yeah. Oh, Lewis, Michael Lewis. He wrote Lewis. it? Oh, cool. Michael Lewis was from Solomon Brothers. Solomon Brothers? Yeah. Michael Lewis was from Solomon Brothers. Mm -hmm. So did, did you see the movie The Big Short? Big Short? Yeah. Uh, it's a big, big, big movie. He uh, wrote the book. About the financial short yeah. movie. Yeah. He wrote the book that was that movie. Uh, the, the, the title of the movie Big Short? The Big Short, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I, I found of a uh, financial market and see all the movies, but yeah. this one... The Big Short is... Saw, uh, yeah. Michael Lewis wrote the book that became the movie. Mm -hmm. He's originally from Solomon Brothers, which okay. is where I was. By the way, it's, it wouldn't be a route if I ask your personal contact uh, for future communications, something like that. Sure, I don't, I don't always answer. <laughs> but I will try <laughs> to contact it. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, let's find it. Oh, actually, this is the best. Yeah, use that one. That's perfect. Yeah, thank you very much. That, that, will, come to, was, that will come to two uh, different accounts. Thank you very much. Have a nice Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, yeah, sometimes. I mean, uh, yeah, um, I miss it until I remember it. And I go, ah, I don't miss it that much. It was fun. I, you, you have to, it wasn't Wall Street. Though. I had a lot of fun with Solomon Brothers. Solomon Brothers was one of the coolest places to work. Hmm. Um, um, it was, uh, it was, it, it did a lot of principal investment. So we would do billion dollar trades. I mean, multi billion dollar trades. Uh, it meant that the firm was high risk. So on any given day, you could be up 10 million, 10 billion, or down two billion. But the cool thing about it was, when you became the managing director there, there were only about a hundred of us. You could get any three of us to do almost anything in the company. Right. So in other words, it, it was, you know, if any three of us agreed to do it, we could do it. It was very loosely around the day. But again, it was because we were a hundred out of, you know, ten thousand. It was a small group of managing directors. Mm -hmm. And we would see each other for, when I was in New York, I was in Asia, but when I was in New York, I would just go to the lunchroom. We had a special partner's lunchroom. And I would just sit there for three hours and I could see everybody walk by me because everyone came to lunch together, mm -hmm. right? And it meant that I would just sit there and I could do business. Just by, you know, I'd be eating, you know, drinking coffee and eating ice cream and pizza. And you could get everything done in those three hours. No bureaucracy, no red tape, no bullshit. Just get it done. It's uh, 18th or 19th uh, when it was uh, at uh, when last century. Uh, at what years? This. W when did it start? Yeah, yeah. Uh, gee, um, probably the late 1800s, late 18, early 1900s. Mm -hmm. uh, it was one of the early. It was one of the later ones. It was, um, 
so it was uh, um, the, the traditional Wall Street is, has this weird hierarchy. Mm -hmm. And you had the traditional, you know, very, very old, rich, conservative Boss. places. Yeah. yeah. Goldman Sachs, mm -hmm. Kidder Peabody, these places. Most of them blew up. Goldman was not, but the other ones disappeared. Mm -hmm. Below them, you had uh, the um, the newer ones that were more aggressive. Mm -hmm. um, it meant in New York, Jewish. Mm -hmm. It was that period. Uh, many of them survived. Solomon Brothers is one. Mm -hmm. And became very successful. So by the time I was there, Solomon Brothers was the number one bond house in the entire world. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but they were relatively new, and they were not part of the traditional top group. But by the time I got there, they were right up there. They were huge. Exponentially. Sorry? They uh, grew they, exponentially. Yes, very much so. So mortgage-backed securities were invented at Solomon Brothers. Uh, Asset-backed securities. Uh, credit default swaps invented at Solomon Brothers. These are all very, very profitable things uh, that... Um, uh, that made them very successful. Good? Good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good. 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 Good.